Oh, baby! Llama, llama, red pajama, Reese's story, Reese's mama, mama keeps his baby hair, mama llama go downstairs, llama, llama, red pajama, feels alone without his mama, baby llama wants a drink, mama did the kitchen sink, llama, llama, red pajama, call down to his llama, llama, llama. Alright, the palace. It, it, it's time for I Said What I Said Saturday. Right here on Queen Sheba. Alright, the palace. Let's go. Damn! Llama, llama, red pajama, Reese's story, Reese's mama, mama keeps his baby hair, mama llama go downstairs, llama llama, red pajama, feels alone without his mama, baby llama won't. Mama at the kitchen sink. Mama, mama, red pajama, reads a story with this mama. I'm going to learn this song one day so I can rap it anyway. Yes, thank you, Mama V. You can hear me. Cinnamon Swirls in the building. Terrell Singer, we see you, Palace Prince. Thank you, everybody. Happy Saturday. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, everybody, to I Said What I Said Saturdays. <clears throat> I made it a point to come. I made it a point to come because your girl was feeling a bit under the weather, honey, and I made the fatal mistake of letting a burst of energy trick me on my spot. I got a burst of energy. I've been down for a couple of days. Let me tell you, I got a burst of energy yesterday, and I thought, okay, I'm feeling good. So I had the audacity to get up, get dressed, look cute, and go out. And baby, when I tell you that body started chilling, <laughs> uh, body just started having chill. I was like, oh, that's, that's where we go wrong. That's where we go wrong. Because don't get tricked out of your spot. When you're sick, go ahead and take some time off when you're sick. Because otherwise, you're going to make it worse and you're going to have an extended period of being sick and shut in. You know, when they put you on a list for the church, praying for the sick and the shut in, honey, the queen was sick and shut in yesterday. So I'm feeling a little bit better. And I said, I'm, you know what? Let me do I said what I said Saturdays. So if this is your first time, welcome to Saturday morning. I said what I said. And let me just tell you the rule before we get started. It's never personal. That's rule number one. Rule number two, you can say whatever it is that you want to say, honey. I'm not going to stop you. I'm, I'm going to give you the room and the floor. The floor belongs to you. The only thing is when you're done, you have to sign it, seal it, and deliver it by saying, I said what I said. Now, should we transition into a heated debate or an extended discussion and the crowd, let's just say, they ain't really checking for you, they can put down. A $9.99 super chat to boot you off the stage. Okay. But you can flex too. You have the, oppor the opportunity to flex back by matching that super chat and putting yourself back on the stage. And if they come back and they spend the block on you a second time with another super chat, then you got to sit out for 15 minutes. All right. With that being said, shout out to all of my moderators working the chat on this Monday. I mean, I. Monday morning. Look, on this Saturday morning, it's morning where I'm at. To some of you, it's afternoon. Wherever you are, you know what I mean. With that being said, let's get this party started. But before I do, y'all, I got to share this beautiful, beautiful page. Hey there, boys and girls, come with me. From the magical land to the deep blue sea. Baby's on a quest full of laughter and glee. The amazing adventures of Phoebe. Y'all, a black man created this page. Why do we got Tasha K up here? Why ain't nobody told me that? Lord, have mercy. <laughs> ain't nobody said nothing. But look, let me go ahead. And, we, a black man created this page for, uh, for children. It's a safe page on YouTube. It's called Adventures of BB. B and B. Y'all got to go check it out. His name is Will Marshall. So if that's something you want to do. If you want to enter into the child space realm of YouTube, contact him, reach out to him. And also he created that fire beat that you heard. Yes, he's also a music producer. So he created my beat and he can create yours too, baby. Ain't no, ain't no copyright strikes um, from you.
That's my air fryer. From YouTube, you know, when it comes to those creative beats and those customized beats that he can make on your behalf. But let me play it one more time because I don't know. Tasha K was on my screen, child. Hold on. Hey there, boys and girls, come with me From the magical land to the deep blue sea Phoebe's on a quest full of laughter and glee The amazing adventures of Phoebe All right. We are getting started. We're getting this party started early. Sugar, welcome to the stage. What you standing on this morning when it comes to your business? Hey, queen. Hey, hey there. Oh, you know, I'm standing on respect all day, every day. Um, I, I had a lot of feelings and I'm going to say like reactive abuse. Like that is a trigger right there. So I'm going to stand on this. Martel Hotel, Melody shined a light on you. We see you. You're nothing but decay. There's no growth there. It's just decay. You are stuck in hell. And the T is, we see you expressing that shit right here on earth. This is spiritual. We see you, Martel. I said what I said, and I'm standing on this. She said what she said. Decay. 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 Thank you for coming up, Sugar. We appreciate you getting us started, honey. Okay, I'm being a bush. Powerful. Thank you, Queen. Sugar's going to drop down. Get a clue. Welcome to the stage on the Saturday mornings. I said what I said. What you standing on? Hey, good morning, she Queen Sheba. Good morning, everybody. Good so, morning. How are you today? I love this part of your show. I swear I do. I'm I'm doing better. I'm doing better, to be honest with you. That is so good. Thank you for having me. I love being on here. And oh, you know, I've been keep I haven't I've been on blackout from that show since Basement Billy. So I, I haven't really why I haven't watched anything. I just keep up with it based off of what you all say. And I am so elated that he is finally getting his just due. I really hope that everything that um, Melody's heart desires, as far as for her children and herself, that she gets what she gets. But you know, one thing that, that she wants, but uh, one thing that I did want to say, having been uh, uh, a young girl once, and I'm 47, I know I don't sound like it. I've been married for 25 years, but the one thing that I know, having been a, a young black girl um, with a single mother, my parents were married and then they got divorced. But after the divorce, my dad turned out just like how Martel was, is, and how he is just so, uh, um, what's the word that I want to get? He doesn't care. He doesn't care about the feelings and how he hurts his children's feelings and how these words that he says and these actions that he's doing while he thinks that sugar mama is so young oh she doesn't she's not paying attention but you know kids they learn through observation so you really don't know what they're taking in what they're holding and um having had a father who has done similar things very hurtful things I just know in my heart and I've been praying for that little girl that she's going to use that as fuel um, because he already trying to tear her down and she haven't even got her real start in life and how, and, and it's just so sad to me, but you know, uh, what you reap is what you sow, Martel. And so I'm just, I know you, they say you shouldn't be happy about seeing somebody else's demise, but I'm, I'm just going to keep it real and say, I'm a lady. And I said, what the hell I said? Thank you, Queen Sheba. I know that's right. She said. What the hell she said. And I appreciate you coming up. Uh, get a clue. We got a clue. We got it, baby. Get a clue is going to drop down. Olivia Shankel, welcome to the stage on Saturday morning. I said what I said. What are you standing on? Good morning, Queen and Chad. I'm standing on this. Martel Laron Holt. You ain't shit. You ain't going to be shit because you do a lot of shit. AKA small head, bald head, can't make a woman come ass eater. That's what I stand on. Thank you. And I said what I said. 
Oh, wow. Listen, <laughs> Olivia, thank you. Thank you for swinging by. We appreciate you. She said what she said. Thank you. All for right. You've been a tip palace. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Olivia's going to drop down. And we're going to bring up Emancipated Education. Welcome to Saturday morning. I said what I said. What are you standing on this morning? Hey, Queen Sheba. Hey. I am such a fan, first of all. And when I found out you were my soror, I love it even more. Yes. yes. This morning, I am standing on Black marriage and Black family. And having been... <clears throat> Married at an early age, just like Mel. It's been 30 years, but I did go through two separations because of infidelity. And I do understand what you would do to try to keep your marriage. And I also understand the spiritual side of it. And I think people keep forgetting that a marriage covenant is God's business. And I believe Mel did all that she could do um, to try to break generational curses. Both her and Martell um, grew up without their fathers. And so I just want to say I don't understand the um, backlash and hatred um, against her just because she was trying to do what she can to protect her family. And so I just want to remind everybody that, you know, she did the right thing. She did all that she can do. But when it comes down to just being um, terrorized and abused, she definitely did what she had to do. Um, it was a toxic um, marriage. She said that it was, and she did the right thing by getting out. And I just don't understand all the hatred and the jealousy against her. And so once again, I support her on all the decisions that she has made to first stand for her marriage and then to get up out of it when it became too toxic. And I say it what I say it. She said what she said, and we appreciate you standing on business queen. Thank you. Emancipate emancipated education for coming up. We appreciate it. All right. emancipated education is going to drop down and we are going to bring Simone wealthy to the stage. Welcome queen to Saturday mornings. I said what I said, what are you standing on this morning? Well, good morning, queen. Good morning, palace. I am standing on, I want to, I know we've really been supporting Melody these last few days ever since that interview dropped, but I really want to challenge everyone to create a playlist of all of her music and play it for 24 hours um, and maybe even have just a day that is dedicated solely to her um, all through YouTube, all of the content creators that really support her and just, you know, I, I want to make the devil mad, i.e. Martel, i.e. Carlos, i.e. own whomever. I, I think that um, what we're doing currently and that day just totally dedicated to her standing against abuse and in all forms could be very, very powerful, just like what we did with the fasting a few weeks ago. So basically, um, I don't have anything else but that. I just wanted to say that and just I, I've been playing her music um, for the last few days, just anything I can just to support her. I mean, I don't know how much beneficial, you know, it could be, but just something just to put something positive in the air and and along with our prayers and support for her and, and you know, and run up her products, you know, go, you know, purchase something. It's she has something for everyone. And I said what I said. And she said what she said. I love that. Take an opportunity to put a positive spin and level up. Thank you, Simone Walthy, for giving us that great idea. All right, y'all. Simone's going to drop down. Listen, and let me tell you something about I said what I said. It does not have to be love and marriage Huntsville related. It could be anything, hot topics, something that you've seen in the news. Hell, you could come on and stand on business when it comes to your neighbor. They don't know you here. Family, friends, they don't know you here. Somebody at work. They don't know you're here. Your husband, your wife, your dog, your cat. They don't know you're here. Kayla, a welcome to the stage. To Saturday morning, I said what I said. What are you standing on this morning, Queen? Kayla? Mic check. Kayla. 
All right, Kayla, I'm going to go to the next person while you, are you there? Hello? Hi, Kayla. Hi. How are you? Okay. How okay. Are you? Good. You're up next. What you standing on? You know, Martel said that um, when the kids came back and they were bad as hell, well, um, they were bad. They had an attitude. They wasn't bad. They had an attitude. They didn't want to be there. And I said what I said. I know that's right. <laughs> huh? She said, they went bad, nigga. They just didn't want to be at your house. You know what, Kayla? That's a good point. And I appreciate you coming up to call that out. Thank you, Queen. You have a wonderful morning. You too, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Sure. Kayla's going to drop down. We're going to bring up a set. A set. Oh, welcome to the stage to good Saturday morning. morning. I said what I said. What are you standing on? Good morning, Queen. Y'all can hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm standing on this. I'm standing on gentle parenting and not permissive parenting. And when they talked about, when he talked about hitting his kids, that triggered me to the umpteenth degree. My son is seven years old and I don't put my hands on him because I don't expect for him to put his hands on nobody. And how can I teach him how to be a better person, how to be emotionally intelligent if I'm putting my hands on him? So I'm standing on gentle parenting does not mean permissive parenting. He don't get away with nothing. He's very, very respectful. And guess what? I keep my hands to myself and so does he. So <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm very triggered this morning because hearing that like I hit my kid or I did this or they came back bad. No, they came back the way they, they came to you the way you show up. And that's the reason why they showed up that way because that's how you show up. So I'm standing on keep your mother flipping hands to yourself. Let's talk about it. Let's be about it. And let's, let's create a generation of children that are not in fear of their parents, but are in love with the fact that their parents can talk to them and love with the fact that their parents can have a conversation with them and are not afraid of them. So I'm, so I'm super triggered this morning because listening to that, like keep your hands to yourself. 25 times, 15 times, two times, doesn't matter how many times you hit your kid. It's it's one too many. And I said what I said. I'm standing on that. You said what she said. Keep your hands to yourself. I know that's right. Thank you, Aset. Thank you for coming up. Aset is going to drop down. Uh, or or can you drop me down? Because stream sure, sure, tricky. Sure. I got you. <laughs> I'm going to drop you down and then just exit the studio. All right, and we're going to bring Leslie and Fitness up to the stage. Welcome to Saturday morning. I said what I said. What you standing on today, Queen? Hey, Queen. This is my first time up. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Welcome. I'm so excited. I'm always in the bushes, but I just wanted to get on this morning because I just got finished working out, and I wanted to encourage people to move your body. Don't wait till something happens. We want to prevent it. Move your body. A 30-minute workout is only 4% of your day. Move your body. I said what I said, and I'm standing on it as a fitness influencer. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. The queen said, move your body. Your health is your wealth. And don't wait till it's too late to be begging and wishing and hoping and praying. Start moving now. Now she gave you 30 minutes, but do what you can. If you're not, if you're not quite at 30 minutes yet, remember 1% atomic habits, work your way up. But anything like the queen said is better than nothing. And we appreciate you, Leslie Ann Fitness for standing on business. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. You too. And welcome. Look, I'm glad. See, your first time up wasn't that bad, was it? No, not at all. I'm be up more often now. <laughs> it was not that bad. All right, Queen, we appreciate you. Bye -bye. That's a great reminder. All right, Leslie's gonna drop down. We're gonna bring Charlotte Loring up to the stage for Saturday morning. I said what I said. Charlotte, what you standing on this morning? Stop the BS. 
Good morning, Queen, wow. and everyone in wow. the chat. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I want Martell bald headed, no D ass to get his ass somewhere and sit down somewhere and stop <laughs> stop the lying because we are sick of it. And I wish that I could see his bald head ass because I would want to beat the hell out of him because mm -hmm. he ain't no good. He's not good for the kids. He's not good for cold whatever you want to call her. He ain't good for the poop that he pooped in the toilet. That, the toilet don't even bullshit, want to see his poop. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. He ain't good for nothing. And I am sick of him. And he don't know that his time is coming. It's coming. God is going to fix it all. And I'm praying for Melanie and them beautiful babies because I'm naming it and I'm claiming it that she will get the victory on the 30th. She will get custody, full custody of her beautiful babies. And Martell can kiss my <laughs> boop, boop, boop. I said <laughs> what I said and I mean what I said. Char oh, baby, y'all are not playing today. Thank you, Miss Charlotte, for coming up and sending on business. I appreciate you, Queen. You have a beautiful Saturday. You All too, right. Queen, and I hope you continue to feel better. Thank you so much. Thank you. All I'm right, gonna so we're going to drop Miss. We're going to drop Miss Charlotte down, and we got Karen coming up. Karen, it says that your device is not connected. You can reconnect. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to reconnect while I uh, go ahead and do a shout out for my super chats. Let me do that while you get situated. And then we're going to bring Karen back up. Let's see. Give me one second, y'all. Yes. Money, 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 money comes to me. Flowing effortless, effortless, effortlessly. Money, 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 money comes to me. Come, comes to me, comes to me, comes to me. Money, 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 money comes to me. Flowing effortless, effortless, effortlessly. Money, 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 money comes to me, comes to me, comes to me. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money comes to me. Yes, it sure does. By way of Tanya Singleton with a two-piece and a pepper. She says, good morning, queen. Love you. And I said what I said. Thank you. And I love you more. Charlotte Loring. Money, 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 money comes to me by way of Charlotte with a five-piece, honey, and two biscuits and a strawberry soda water. Thank you, Charlotte, for the five-piece. We appreciate you over here in the palace. Money, 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 money comes to me by way of peace, love, and prayers with a 10-piece. She says, prayers up. To cancel the demon spirit of Suka. Hold on now. I was on a roll till you put that word. Let me, let me see if I got it. Hold on, y'all. <clears throat> it's like hopscotch. Let me try to get in here. Praise up to cancel the demon spirit of Sukubus. Sukubus. May our young ladies be protected against hosting this entity. Protect young men from its charm. I said... What I said. Yes, you did, Queen. We appreciate that. I'm going to have to work on that enunciation of subcaboose. Money, 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 money comes to me by way of Courtney Clark with the 10 piece standing on business. She says, send in love to Melody and the Eminem kids. Tank will bring prestige back to the name of Martel Holt. We love you, Prince and Princesses. Thank you all for your super chats. I really appreciate it. And with that being said, we are going to go to Deborah, Welcome to the stage, Deborah. What are you standing on when it comes to Saturday morning? I said what I said. Well, good morning, Palace. How's everybody? Good morning. I, mean, I am in here feeling good and painting <laughs> this room that my granddaughter has me painting that I don't feel like painting, but anywho. Um, I just want to say I'm just going to take a different approach because I don't need my blood pressure going up over people I don't know. But I just happen to care about, you know. Um, so I'll just say I'm going to trust that Melody has this. She has a great team working with her. I'm pretty good. Her, I'm pretty sure her legal um, team is doing whatever they need to do. So um, I've supported her business this past week, 
And, you know, I'm just taking a different approach. Like, I don't want, I'm not going to say anything negative. I'm done with that. I've been screaming at Martel. He can't hear me. <laughs> but I've been screaming at the television, screaming at people online, screaming at Tasha K, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to keep it light and say that I trust the process. And, you know, the wheels of justice move slowly. I'm going to pray that none of that stuff he tried to do, which only made people support her more. And, you know, and the last thing I'll leave with is Martel doesn't know how to read the room. And we don't care what she did. Like, people don't care. That stuff is over. He needs to move on and go ahead and try to live his best life. And, you know, just stop taunting this lady and, um, you know, and, and do, best, do the best he can about his children. You know, just leave people alone. So that's all I came up to say. Everybody have a great Saturday and I'll back to painting. Can you sign it, seal it, and deliver it oh, before oh, you I leave? I said what I said. Of course. All I right. Thank it. you. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you, Deborah. We're going to drop uh -huh. Deborah down and we have Rose Armstead. Welcome to Saturday morning. I said what I said. What are you standing on this morning? Can you hear me? Um, yes, we can. Mm hmm Okay, Queen Sheba. Hi, first of all, I want to speak to you. You are beautiful. Thank and you. I wanted to say, I'm I'm sorry, but I got to say this. I want Martel in jail. I want him in jail. He needs to take accountable for what he is doing to Mel and those beautiful babies. Mel, that baby, sugar mama, I don't, I didn't like that what he said about her. He knows that she's his. He wrong for that. So I, I said what I said, and I'm standing on business. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, and thank you for coming up, Rose. I think this is your first time. Yes, I see it you is. all the time. Yeah, I see you all the time holding it down in the chat, but I appreciate you clicking that link and coming up. You have a wonderful Saturday. You too. Bye-bye. All right, we're dropping down Rose, and we are going to bring up Journey to Jasmine. Uh, welcome to the stage on Saturday morning. I said what I said. What are you standing on, Journey? Good morning, Queen. Can you hear me? Yep. Good morning. Bad, bad. Good morning. So happy that you're feeling better, for sure. Heck yeah. I thought she was out for a second. <laughs> but, baby, um... I did too, baby. <laughs> I thought it was, look, what's the name of it? What they call, uh, they have a series of books. Left Behind series, shit. I oh, thought I, was, I, thought I got left behind. The kid, I used to read the kids' uh version when I was um a child. That's funny. Anyway, oh, <laughs> oh Lord, what was I about to say? Um, I got two things I got to stand on this morning. So, um, I'll start with Little Hook and Curve. So, what? He, okay, let me start here. So, me and Sugar Mama got the exact same birthday. Um. She's a Sagittarius as well. And one thing about us, we won't really be forgetting anything. In fact, if anything, like my short term memory is horrible, but my long term memory, I can remember to the age of four, like legit. And it's not necessarily holding a grudge, but I remember how you treat. There's people from my church, like being a PK and stuff. I'll never, I, I mean, I'll forgive them, but I'll remember how they treated me. Like, and I'll never fool with them to this day. And I was a child, you know, and just thinking about Sugar Mama's independence and just how strong she is as a little girl. Like, did y'all hear that prayer that she prayed? She's powerful. And I, that powerful prayer that she prayed, I know she's a dis discerner already. Look at her mom, you know, so I already know she can feel even, even if, you know, in a child's brain. I'm sure she can feel how her, her father tries to triangulate her, not only with her younger sibling, but also her other siblings. He's a terrible person. And honestly, I don't think his kids, especially like, you know, when you're a child, you don't see it, see it a certain way. But when you get older and then they're able to look back on this because they have all the receipts, everything that he's done is on the Internet or on TV. So. They have nothing but receipts to show how demonic their father has been, not only to their mother, but inadvertently them as well. So, um, you know, Marta, he just, honestly, he is just a pig of a person. He definitely deserves to go to jail. And I, I, if, if it wasn't going to be for um, the DV thing, I, he definitely shot himself in the foot with doxing her. 
that was just out of line. I mean, everything he's done is out of line. So really, this is kind of in sync with how he's already been operating, which is just, I'm only laughing. I'm not laughing, laughing at the situation. It's like nervous laughter or whatever. Just, I just cannot fathom how a human is like this, especially to their own offspring and their um, ex-wife and stuff. And on, it's just disgusting. Just to, mm, Anyway, I'm going to get into all that. But to segue into my other point um, in regards to the doxing, us as millimeters, I need us to one rally behind Mel. And like, um, I think it was Simone Wealthy who said it, um, play her music, stream her music, create a uh, playlist. I mean, you saw how we sold out of the Sugar Mama products. And, you know, we 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 definitely support my um, Melamita shirt just got, got here yesterday. So I'm excited about that. Um, with that being said, I need us as a collective to have more discernment and in vetting each other, don't be so quick to chop off the next person's head. If we are millimeters and we're supposed to be united, a united front in advancing the, the position of women and making sure that we are in a properly loved space, we got to start with each other as well and ourselves. Uh, I won't get too deep into it, but I'm leaving all the Facebook groups. That's that's for sure. Uh, a lot of people get really, really nasty. And even in the like I asked the question yesterday and. I wasn't being malicious at all. I was really asking for this to give to her team because I thought that's what we were all supposed to be doing was to help um, bring more evidence forth to, to you know, get him for this whole doxing situation, you know. Um, but I was attacked for that. And about this one particular person. Now, granted, we got on the phone. Were you on YouTube? No, this was on Facebook. Yeah, she, uh, yeah, she, uh, yeah. Okay. I, all the Facebook groups. Trust them. I've left them all. I did left them all yesterday. If I if I did, wasn't kicked out of it, what cut some people out? <laughs> well, let's, so so you want them to be positive? Yes. Stop okay. being quick to chop the next woman head off. If you don't if you don't agree with how someone said something or what they said, or you just feel uh, suspicious about it, like one girl, she talking about. Oh, I thought she was more. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh -uh. I'm, I'm not to get out to yeah, but. Just if you if you have questions, just ask. Don't be so quick to just chop the person off because we're supposed to be in this together. And that's that's really the point that I'm trying to make. Gotcha. Let's, let's do it. I mean, we're supposed to be vetting the people in our lives anyway. Properly do it, do it in this, too. And in, in, in vetting, that does not mean that you have to be nasty. Just ask questions if you don't know. That's that's kind of like my main thing. Just ask questions if you don't. If you don't like it, just either move on or correct in kindness. That's kind of my thing. And I'm I'm learning that myself because I know I'm not always the kindest person. I'm I'm <laughs> if I don't like something that somebody said, especially like the anti-male people, oh I I'm very, very mean. <laughs> so I'm working on it myself. So I, in in me saying this, I am talking to myself as well. But I would like us to be um better to each other because I do feel that we are way more powerful together in advancing this movement for women and for Melody uh, for sure. So that's really all I got to say on that. And um, I said what I said. All right. Well, thank you. She said what she said. Y'all be nice out there. Play nice. And look, that's why I stopped you because somebody's already in the chat all over your comment. That's why I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. We're going to let that beef stay over there. And we're going to keep the play over here because somebody's already knowing when you joined and blah, blah, blah. So that's why we got to be very careful. But look, go handle business in the chat, Journey to Jasmine. All right, y'all. We're no, going to drop her down. We're going to drop her down. And then let me get to some of these super chats. And I'm going to open up the line. Listen, remember, you can stand on business. It, it does not have to be love and marriage, Huntsville uh, content. It could be anything. Anything you need to say, hell, they don't know. Listen, real quick, let me let me sift, shift over to these uh super chats real quick. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Yeah. <laughs>
All right, Palace. The Super Chat Squad is in the building. We appreciate you, baby. The Super Chats are fire. Get in your bag. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money from Peace, Love, and Prayers with a two-piece. She says, typo correction, queen. Succubus. Thanks, Palace. Okay, girl, because you have me up here struggling. Struggling, child, like a fifth grader at a spelling bee. Did I, so did I say it right this time? Succubus. Because I, I that first word, you got me jammed up. You got me jammed up as a witness on what? On the stage? Uh, let's see. Jackie Johnson, that's a lot of money. A four-piece, we thank you for the super sticker. And then Charlotte Loring's. She's spinning a block with a two-piece and a pepper. She said, Tank gonna whoop that ass one day. Listen, <laughs> listen. Yes, EBSQ coming in hard with a 20-piece to all victims of abuse, sending love and protection. Pray your sin. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. We appreciate all of the super chats that have come through, that's flowing through effortlessly. Money, 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 money comes to me. With that being said, welcome to the stage, astute Queen B. To Saturday morning, I said what I said. What are you standing on this morning? Good morning, Queen. And good, good morning, morning to all the ladies. What I'm standing on today is sisterhood because I am a woman that loves my sisters. And I feel bad that so many women don't get it. Like, stop allowing outside world and other people and men to keep you from your sisters. Because if you talk to your sisters, you will learn a lot more about how to deal with certain type of individuals. That's how I see it. And if you're a woman, not a girl, not a lady, not a young lady, but if you're a grown woman and you standing in your adulthood, you should always be standing on business. Even when you're going through it, you still got to make sure it's like, look, I may be going through this, but I got this business right here to handle. So I'm going to handle this. You can sit back there and you can wait. But this right here got to be done first. So I stand on sticking with my sisters. I am a millimeter. I don't broadcast it all the time, but I am. I'm just a quiet person when it comes to certain things. But I appreciate you trending Journey to Jasmine and um, here for hot tea. Because y'all make me look, y'all give me a better outlook on other things that I'll be thinking and I'll be thinking I'm wrong. And when I hear you talking, I'm like, I wasn't wrong. I just don't say that. So what I'm standing on is I stand with my sisters. I stand with Mel all day, every day. And I stand on business. That's it. And can you sign it, sell it, and deliver it? By saying, I said. I, stand, I said what I said. All right. Oh Thank you. Woo. All right. And Stu Queen B, we appreciate you coming up, standing on business, representing sisterhood strong, baby. And we're going to drop down to Stu Queen B. Thank you. Have a blessed one. You too. A suit and Jasmine kind of sound alike, in my opinion. Um, and we're going to bring up trending at some point. I got it. Listen, I didn't say trending topics. All right. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I didn't say trending topics this time. You did yes. it. You actually said it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. What are you standing on this morning? Okay. <laughs> um, first, shout out to Sue Queen B since she was up here. Thank you so much for putting me in that category with these lovely women. <laughs> and Queen is succubus. Suck you bus. Succubus. <laughs> What did I say? Succubus. Okay, okay. Damn, <laughs> I was close. You were close. You were close. <laughs> what was the first oh. one? She had up. What was the first one she had up the succubus? <laughs> she, th yeah, that was a typo. So I wasn't even going. <laughs> damn. Damn. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I want to say that I am accepting all the good things coming to me, and I hope everyone accepts all the good things coming to them. Accept compliments that come to us without adding a disclaimer at the end. That's a horrible habit I have. So I'm, you know, we gotta we gotta accept the compliments and the positive things and no disclaimer, just that's right. We deserved it. So just accept it. And I, I 2024 is gonna be a really big year in the best of ways. I said what I said. Breathe. Breathe. 
short and to the point. He said what she said. Thank you for coming up, trending at some point. Thank you. You have a wonderful Saturday, sis. You too, queen. All right. I, KP, are you coming back up? Karen, are you coming back up? I'll give it a couple of seconds. Give me one second. Money, 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 money comes to me, flowing effortless, effortless, effortlessly. Money, 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 money comes to me, come, comes to me, comes to me, comes to me. Money, 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 money comes to me, flowing effortless, effortless, effortlessly. Money, 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 money comes to me, comes to me, comes to me. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money comes to me by way of Karen. Karen said she had a what a five piece. Thank you, thank you. Karen said, I had a problem connecting, but always here to supply. And I receive, honey. I'm a receiving vessel. Thank you, Karen. I know you tried. But listen, if you want to come back up, let me tell you how to do it real quick. When you come up, I could see you backstage you had on your camera. All you have to do is hit the camera icon one more time, and it'll turn your camera off as opposed to disconnecting yourself. So come back up, and when you can see yourself, just hit your camera and turn the camera off. Candace, I see you backstage, but you've disconnected your, de your device somehow. Money, 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 money comes to me by way of Dorothy Redden. Thank you, Dorothy, with a 10 piece. Yes, y'all standing on business this morning. I appreciate it and I love it. We're going to give these queens a, ch a, a chance just to kind of work through these technology challenges um, to be able to come back up and say what they need to say. Let's give them a couple of seconds and... Let me try. Candace, I'm going to bring you to the stage, okay? All right. Welcome, Candace. Hey, Queen Shiva. How are you? Yes. Yes. What are you standing on? Okay. So today, I kind of want to change the subject a little bit, segue to a different one that's trending okay. right now. I'm standing with Megan the Stallion. Um, I'm standing with the fact that I don't think that... Uh, Nicki Minaj should have went below the belt talking about her uh, deceased mom. It's personal for me because my mother is also deceased. And I'm sorry if you sit up here and say something about Condren or anything about my mama. It's on site when I see you. Forget the record label. Forget the glam. Baby, I'm taking my wig off. I'm Vaseline in it up. I'm standing on business and I'm going to whoop your ass on, right on site. That's what I, I said what I said. Oh, don't on. talk about my mama. Don't talk about my mother. Don't play with my mom when she's deceased. Period. Point it's blank. Period. Period. Shit. Did y'all hear that with that Nikki? Listen, what brought about all this, Candace? So in in her new song, she makes one line talking about Megan's Law. Megan's Law is actually not Megan the Stallion's Law. It's Megan, another lady's law. I'm not even sure if it's a part of our state, uh, state of Texas, but it's a law about uh, registered sex offenders being made public so that the public can be more aware of what's going on. And I guess Nicki Minaj got herself caught up with a man that got some other additional charges such as that. That. And her father and her brother also allegedly had some issues such as that as well. And so I think she thought Megan was taking a stab at her. Listen, if you don't take your long, broken nose, uh, busted BBL, I'm too old to be acting like that behind somewhere. Uh, I'm letting you know now the stallionaires, because I'm also a stallionaire. I'm a millimeter riding a dang horse around town. We're going to come for you too, because that was a low blow. You can talk about her little foot being shot and she posted pictures of pretty feet. Okay, who cares? That's fine. That's keeping it on wax. Yes. But don't talk about nobody mama and her daddy just died. So uh, how would you like if that woman come back and talk about your deceased father? That's just going below the belt. So I'm standing on business. I said what I said. She could catch a fade. She could catch a fade. She could catch one? She could catch a fade with some brand new clippers. <laughs> Listen. Oh wow. Wow. Catch a fade with some brand new clippers, baby. Don't talk about nobody's mama. You went too far. You went too far. Listen, Nikki sounded like she was on drugs and every ant. 
She was, and I'm like, okay, girl, you know, that's cool. Your rant was, uh, you know, hot. You got her, but that's all. Keep it about, I don't know, hair, weed, BBLs. Keep it about that, but don't come about my mama and my mama not here to defend herself. I'll come out the gate swinging and I ain't thinking. Let's take and a poll from the chat. Did y'all hear that rant that Nicki Minaj did regarding Megan Thee Stallion? Did y'all hear that crap? And do you think all is fair? When, when there's a beef, do you feel like everybody's fair? Your kids, your mama, your daddy, or should it, it should remain between the two of you? What are your thoughts on that? From the chat. Is it just between you and that person? Or shit, if you, if you, if you coming in, you're gonna talk about everybody. Mom, like what kind of argue? When you argue, are you going for the jugular? All right, let's see what they talking about. They say Nikki is weird now. Yeah, I don't know what kind of, you know what? Let me watch. Let me, I ain't going to even say it. But we got, uh, Karen, you keep trying, but let me try. Well, it won't even let me bring her up. But no, I appreciate you coming up and standing on business, Candace. That was a good one. Thank you. You have a good Saturday. You too. You too, Queen. I am going to go to some more Super Chats. Give me one second. All right, Palace. The Super Chat Squad is in the building. We appreciate you, baby. The Super Chats are fire. Get in your bag. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I see not only are the Super Chats flowing in effortlessly, but so are the cash apps. So I just want to tell y'all, I see you backstage. Um, I'm checking my phone. I keep hearing that that dot, those coins going off. So thank you, thank you for those of you that are kind enough to not only send Super Chats, but also send cash apps. Somebody's mama said, if you, if, if you are a hit dog, please holler at home, Nikki. You know what? I can't argue with that. That was just a weird flex. I don't understand it, but I guess she feels like she's Nicki Minaj and she can say whatever the hell she wants to say. Thank you for the five piece, Sheila Aaron. We appreciate it, Queen. Standing on business early in the morning. A 10 piece from Justine Battle. She says, I'm proud being a member of the palace. And I said what I said. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And we appreciate you. We appreciate you, Sheila. Justine, the Cash App givers, and the those of you that were kind enough to send in um, additional Super Chats. I am going to drop the link one more time to see if anybody else would like to come up and stand on business and get whatever it is you need to get off your chest. Karen, let's try. Mic check once. Ah, Karen, don't hit camera. They can't see you anyway. I have an overlay. Do it again. Oh, we almost had it. Didn't we almost have it all? Yes, Karen, we almost had it. We almost had it. <laughs> Trending at some point said, I love when Queen has to get away from the mic because she's laughing so hard. Listen, that was good. Candace shocked me with that one. She shocked me with that one. Who is Nikki? Rose said, who is Nikki? Anybody want to tell her? Rose don't know who Nikki is. Nicki Minaj, Rose. Nicki Minaj. Let me drop the link. <clears throat> and if not, we would go to a quick hot topic. And Karen, welcome to the stage. Unmute yourself. Nobody can see you. Oh, man, it must not be meant to be today. That's okay. That's all right. Nicki Minaj. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to hot topics. Give me one second. If nobody else is coming up, I'll give you a couple of seconds. If not, we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to switch gears. I see. You. And welcome to all of my content creators in the, in the his house. You know, uh, rocking with the palace this morning. I appreciate you all for stopping by. I really do. All right. Let me, let me share my screen. Hold on. Let me pull it up, child. Let me make sure I'm ready to go. All right. Here we go. I need somebody to come up. Let me know when y'all can see my screen. Normally, I would have somebody on stage to tell me. Can y'all see the screen? 
Let's go. I'm ready, sugar. Somebody say yes or no. Can you see my screen? <clears throat> yes? No? Can y'all see? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No. All right. Let's do this. I know what I'm doing wrong. Hold on. Now can y'all see it? Can y'all see this video right here? Karen, don't turn off your camera when I bring you up because they won't be able to see you anymore when I put that overlay on, okay? Give me a thumbs up. I can see you backstage. Nobody else can. All right. Can y'all see my screen now? All right. Let's go. Everybody can see it. We're going to go to a hot topic. Then I'm going to come back and let... You know what? Let me let them stand up. Let me, let's just go. Right here. We're here. Give me one second. All right. We good to go. Here we go. Did you take me on our first date? You. If you dress like that, we're going to the crib first. And then we can do whatever after that. If, if Depending on how that goes. <sighs> I know you want me to get up here and lie to you. No, of course not. I don't like lies. But, question, mm -hmm. why would you be taking me to your house? Shit, what you want to go to a hotel or something? No. b, &B. No. <laughs> shit, oh shit, I like that too. Wait, oh my God, am I like selling <laughs> sex to you? I mean, I just feel like, you know, I look good, body look good, but it shouldn't, you make money. It shouldn't, yeah, I make money, I'm a. You look real good. Right, like this is, this is like walking beauty, but. Like, you know, I have mad respect for myself. Where would you take me on a date? Is that your answer? The crib. We can go get some food wherever you like. Where would you take me? I said wherever you like. I'm real like. Just whatever I want. Yeah. What if I want to go shopping? Damn, we're going to have to call somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to have to decline. But, you know, you got that shit on. So you I flat. Give, I give them a piece Um... When I walk away. Right, yeah. So we not keep ace? No, I'm not yeah, keeping it. Walk slow, huh? <laughs> I'm going to take me. I ain't, I ain't trying to be funny. Some of y'all daughters and nieces are out here looking a damn fool. Looking a damn fool. We can't put all the pressure on the men to treat these women like princesses and queens when they walking out looking like $2 prostitutes. Now, anybody want to come up and speak on this? She's asking him, "Would you? where would you take me? He said, I'm taking you to my house. And she said, why? He said, but you want a hotel? So he's telling her, you know what time it is. Dress like that. You're not a girl that I would extend. <clears throat> what is it? Uh, chivalry to. I'm not, you're not getting, you may get a bite to eat, but outside of that, the way you dress and the way you're presenting yourself says one thing and one thing only. Let me pause. Nikki, I mean, Karen, I'm bringing you up to stage. Nobody can see you. Welcome, finally, Karen. What you standing on, queen? Unmute yourself. Take yourself, take your time. Dang, Karen, how you keep exiting out, man? Okay, let's bring up queen. Queen, welcome. Queen, you're on stage. Listen. Queen, do a mic check. Let me try somebody's mama. Somebody's mama walking to the stage. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I can hear you. What are you standing on today? What are you what are you advertising? Hello. Hello, what are you advertising? Mm -hmm. I was always told you dress for the job that you want, not the one that you have. You better preach. And that's the thing, like I always tell my girls, look, what are you advertising? What do you have on? They have to ask them ask themselves what they're representing. And he basically told her what he felt about her. And he didn't lie. He didn't sugarcoat it. And she acted shocked. She looks like she was doing a, a boot wash shoot. <laughs> Where did he do that at?
I mean, not trying to be funny. I don't mean anybody in a disrespect, and you can dress and do like you want to, but unfortunately, everybody doesn't love you. Everybody doesn't know you. They're not your mama. They don't care about you. Mm -hmm. So whenever you put yourself out there like that, don't be surprised that you get treated that way. Hey, you make some good points. And if you and don't be surprised if somebody tells you how they really feel about you and you get shot, she she couldn't possibly be shot. Unfortunately, uh, looking at these young men around right, you, they tell you what they think of you. They tell you what they think of you. The grown men tell them tell you what they think of you. And we don't have anybody to blame about that but ourselves. She wow. wasn't a 16 year old. She looked like she's a grown young lady. She should know better. Yep. And I said what I see. And I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Because you are somebody's mama. So you know what? Your wisdom is needed and trusted. Thank you for coming up today, Queen. Thank you. All right. Listen, he said, I can, she said, are you going to take me to, uh, I know, am I smacking in y'all's ear? I promise I'm sorry. I ain't, ain't listen, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uppity says she killing whatever it is she eat. Listen, like a, like a, uh, what is it? A pride alliance. I'm like the, the lead female hunter over here. I keep muting, but, um, uh, y'all must be picking up some background noise. <laughs> listen. He, she, she asked him, <clears throat> Queen, you're up next, and then Aunt Natty. She asked him, would you take me out to eat? He said, you know, I'll get you something. Let me tell you something. When, you, when you're dressed like that, there are, there, are, there are different labels that men have for women. When he's done with you, you wouldn't get so much as a burger and a french fry. Because he says, I'm taking you to the crib. And when he's done with you, he going to ask you to get out his crib. You ain't getting not one bite, not one nibble, not one kibble, period, point blank. Queen, what are your thoughts? Hello. Sorry about that earlier. Can I be heard now? We can hear you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. How you doing today, Queen? I'm good. I'm good. That's what's up. That's what's up. My father used to always tell me, and I'm the youngest of four two boys and then two girls, my sister and I, um, he said, don't get mad when men treat you by, based on the uniform you wear. You want to lead with your intelligence and not your body. And I also had a trigger back to what Muhammad Ali said to his daughters when he saw them dressing a little bit too provocatively. Your beauty and your preciousness is like a diamond. So the people that want to get close to that and get to know you, you have to make them dig for it, right? Because diamonds are way beneath the surface and you don't want to expose all your beauty and give up everything upon the first encounter, right? And I always used to use that with my daughter as well. I only have one daughter, two sons. And people will treat you how they meet you. That's what my brothers would always tell me as well. Men will treat you how they meet you. If you dress like a duck, <laughs> you act like a duck, you're going to be treated like a duck. And this is just a prime example right here of why we struggle so much as women to have the respect because there's so many of the younger generation and some older too now who just don't get it. They feel like I should be able to wear whatever I want do whatever I want, say however I want, act with however I want, and still be treated like a queen. You know, people treat you how they meet you. And if you dress like this, a Hollywood hooker, well, this is even less than what I've seen some hookers wear. Walking on the stroll. This is this is stripper-esque type of uh, attire. More like something that I would wear underneath a dress or, you know, something like that uh, on a sexy date night. She's not even dressed. This is really deplorable to think that you would be respected and taken out on a respectful date or a time out uh, wherever just wearing just this. 
she didn't even complete her outfit. We really have to stop with the gaslighting ourselves as ladies and stop getting so defensive when older women try to help you polish up yourself and your attitude and how you present yourself to the world is how people are going to define you. Period, point blank. There's no two ways about it. All right. I appreciate you setting on business and giving out that beautiful wisdom, Queen. Absolutely. All right. You You too. You too. Um, some, some people would say that, uh, she's a woman and she can wear what she wants to wear. And who are you, meaning us, to body shame her? That's her freedom. That's her right. What are your thoughts on that in the chat? Cause there are some people that are coming from that angle. She has a right to wear what she wants to wear. It's her freedom. It's her body. Aunt Natty, welcome to the stage. What are your thoughts? Hi, Queen. It's my first time in the palace. Hey, but welcome. I be in the chat all the time. Unfortunately, we see this from teenagers. I'm 68, and I've even seen people almost my age go out dressed like this. So we can't look for the older now to train the younger when the older is doing what the younger ones are doing. We have to take it our own and teach them there's a time and a place for everything. That looked like lingerie she had on. That was straight from the bedroom. I admire that young man for his honesty. You dress like a trick, I'm going to treat you like one. I'm going to take you to my crib, leave $5 on the dresser for you to take an Uber when I get through. Oh. And that's nice. That's what he said. But that's what she dressed like. She could have had on a pair of jeans, a button-down shirt, and some stilettos and been just as sexy. Yes. See, they are getting sexy and naked confused. Men like to imagine what you have. They don't want to see it. And no man wants something that he claims on his arm out like, dressed like that for everybody to see. We have to, yeah, we have to take ours, the ones that know better, we have to stand up and start mentoring these young ladies. Don't they will be truly, truly lost. And that's sad. But I admire him for his honesty because he could have lied to her and told her, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I knew those were his intentions. He said it. How it was. we got to do better? That's right. I got a cousin almost my age, and I tell her, "Baby, just because they make it in your size, don't mean it's made for you." Mm. And I see it what I see. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right, Aunt Natty. We appreciate you coming up and standing on business, honey. You have a wonderful Saturday. You too. Okay. God bless you. Bye bye. Robin Powell, welcome to the stage. Saturday mornings, I said what I said. What are your thoughts? Good morning, Queen. Hey, oh, you're a little bit low. Your volume is a little bit low. Move closer to the phone and or adjust your volume. We want to make sure you that everybody hears you loud and clear. Can you hear me down? Uh-uh. Mic check. Can you hear me now, Queen? You real low. Real, real, real low. Keep talking so we can, but don't, yeah, that's a little low. <clears throat> I'm going to take you off, Robin, just to let you play around and adjust your volume, and I'm going to bring you back. So stand by. 41 Fit, welcome to the stage. What are your thoughts? Hey, 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 Queen. Can you hear me well? Hello, hello? Hello, hello. Hello, hello.
Okay, thank you, Uppity. I wanted to make sure because I took my earbud out. Um, I always get nervous when I come up in the palace, but um, much respect to the queen, thank palace you. guards, and uh, everyone in the chat. Um, so a couple things. Really quick, um, I grew up Buddhist, and there's this thing that they say in Buddhism that for every cause, there's an effect. We have to be careful what we, how we show ourselves in the world because people believe you. How we present ourselves is so essential because they hold on to that, especially the first impressions. So the first impression is the best impression. So I say, and what I say to my daughters, because I have a 24 year old, I'm not sure how old that young lady was in the video, but always, 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 I'm not saying be fake, I'm, I'm not saying not be your unique self, but be careful how you present yourself because people capture that and hold on to it forever until they see something completely different or they allow you to see something completely different. So that's one. I feel terrible for this young lady, but for every cause, there's an effect. Uh -uh. For everything that we put out there, it comes back to us and we have to be, and we have to be, remember that... <laughs> Be okay with the response. For every action, there's a reaction. Yeah. So be okay with that. Um, if if I can see the top of your behind, there's it's obvious that that's what you want me to see, and that's how we you want to be viewed in the world. It just is what it is. The second thing, Queen, that I wanted to say is, and then stay believe, close to your mic. You're doing good, but stay up a little bit. Oh, okay, 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 there okay, we go. okay. There we go. Wonderful. So that being said, um, the second thing is we as women have, I believe, for me, I'll speak for me, I try to apply how men view the world or I want them to see the world the way I see it and view things the way I view things, but they don't perceive things the way they are. They're straight up and down. They're visual people. And it's pretty much, okay, this is what you're presenting to me. Right. <laughs> and I take on that challenge. And that's what the young man did. So just as the last two callers said, it's really important that we just, again, present ourselves the way we want to be perceived. The last thing I want to say, Queen, is old mindsets won't work in this new year. Now, I wasn't here. I just got on the line probably about 10 minutes ago. So I'm not sure what was, what was discussed prior. But in 2024, I want to say to all the people in the chat, we got to walk into the newness of this year. Old mindsets will not work in this new year. If we're going to be winners, if we're going to be victorious in this new year, we have to walk as if we already have the victory. So I don't know why I wanted to say this so strongly to the people in the palace, but the problem is we keep on recycling old thoughts and old mindsets, thinking that a new result is going to happen, and it is not. So in this year, if you want to be healthier, if you want to read four books or five books a month or whatever it might be, you actually have to do the actual work to get the work done to be the new person that you are meant to be. So that's that that being said, that's all I have to say, Queen. I said what I said. Stop making excuses and walk in the newness. If not, shut up. And that's all I got to say. I love it. I love you. I mean, I love it. I love it. Thank you for standing on business this morning. We appreciate you 41 Fit. And so does the crowd because they're going wild in the chat. They're going wild in the chat. Real quick, Uppity is next, y'all. But let me hit these super chats really quick. And there was a couple of questions that came through. Give me one second. Actually, there's this question, <clears throat> not even a question. It was a comment. If I can find it, give me one second. Here it is. It was from, I think it was a man. I could be wrong. It, or maybe a woman. Ah, I didn't save it. I didn't. Oh, Blackbird Boxing Missy. Miss Missy says both of them are dressed inappropriately. How? He has on. He's covered. How is he? Explain that to me. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing, but just give me a little bit more of what you're thinking when it comes to him. We know she's not dressed right, but how is he dressed inappropriately? All right. The other one was T. Yahoo says, we have to realize all women not looking for a husband. Some women are dressing like that to have one night stands. We're in a different era. Don't make it right. Don't make it right. 
don't make it right. And if it's acceptable, can they come stand on your front porch or come out in your neighborhood without you being concerned? See, if they can peruse your neighborhood and you say it's okay, but if, if they came to your neighborhood, the subdivision that you live in dressed like that, would you have the same mindset that we live in a different era? Leave her alone. She's not bothering anyone. No, you would want her to move on along. In my opinion, I think I could be wrong. You see how, how we say, as long as it's over there, it's a different era. But when it gets close to us, we say, wait a minute, don't bring this in my neighborhood. Don't bring this around my kids because what? So do you really feel like that? Or is that just your argument and your position today? Because we're talking about it on YouTube. Just a question. And with that being said, real quick, let me hit this super chat. <clears throat> All right, Palace, the Super Chat Squad is in the building. We appreciate you, baby. The Super Chats are fire. Get in your bag. That's a lot of money. Yes, we are getting our bag. A set says Megan's Law. I use it whenever I move. I can see in real AI time whenever the pedos are. And you didn't finish. But thank you for that five piece. I think you wanted to say more, but you may have hit send before you were done. And a 10 piece from Alanata Beck. She says the palace, the palace is a breast, a breath of fresh air. Yes, we are. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have to agree with you. I think we are. Rag, y'all, ragaby, ragaboy, ragbody with the 10 piece. Thank you for the super sticker. Y'all be tearing me up with these names. Listen. Disorganized crafter with the 10 piece. She says, why do we as black women tolerate people tearing us down? We get enough from white, Asian, Hispanic, black men and women. It's got to stop. We have to realize how strong we are together. And I said what I said. Well, all right. All right. Joanne Edwards with the 10 piece. We appreciate you, queen, coming through the palace as always. Too blessed for you with a five piece says you cannot dress for a sandwich and expect a lobster and then have the nerve enough to say, would you take me shopping? No, ma'am, I would not. No, ma'am, I would not. A rack, rack, see, here we go. Somebody help me with this. Rag bogey, rag bogey, rag bogey. A a 10 piece says, wearing more is less. Stop being part of the herd. Stop giving the milk away for free. And I said what I said, Queen. Hey, that's how right with us. Let me tell you something. Most times I would tell my nephews to be respectful. And I should tell them to be respectful. But if a young lady came dressed like this yeah, and, and wanted my nephew to take her out, I would tell him, run. Run. She don't respect herself. She's not worth your time. And she's not dateable. So would, would any of you encourage your nephews, your sons to, I'm not saying to disrespect her, but to, just to move on. What about young girls that don't respect themselves? Welcome to the stage, Uppity. What are your thoughts on this whole saga? I wanted to give some background on who I am because modesty and immodesty has played a huge part in my life, significantly speaking. When I met our sister, Journey to Jasmine, she goes... You are so statuesque. You look like a fertility goddess, like a fertility statue. I'm a really big woman. That's why when you were calling Terrell tall, I was like, girl, bye. Like, <laughs> he is not. Um, but here's the deal. Y'all remember Players Club with Diamond and, and Ronnie? People were calling me Ronnie when I was an effing middle school kid, okay? So keep that body in mind. Now, as a child, as an autistic child at that all i wanted to do was be pretty and dressed like my friends i wore what everybody else wore and never got the same reaction i wore the same tight jeans i wore the same crop top i wore the same hoop earrings but that 11 12 13 year old was built like ronnie from the damn weeby club and strip club players club and I had really low self-esteem about it. I started cutting myself, harming myself because I was getting so much of that kind of attention. You know, men would run us off the road, you know, run stoplights and stop signs and try to get me in their car. And I'm walking around with a lisp, with, with pigtails in my hair, and I couldn't understand what was going on. So I just thought I was bad. 
So as a kid, if that girl was a kid, I would have a little bit more empathy. But as a grown woman, because here's what I did. I had such a nasty relationship with my body that when I did finally convert from, you know, Christian to Jehovah's Witness to Islam, I started covering everything but my two eyes. OK, so you could not see my nose. You could not see my mouth. You could not see my hands. I had on more than a hijab. I had a naqab, jalabiya, al abaya. Like I was just in all black looking like I was straight out of Saudi Arabia. I actually ended up working in Saudi Arabia because it was more appropriate for me to be dressed that way there and to be free. Now, I left my house for 10 years, for 10 years covering everything but my eyes because I had been so traumatized by interacting in the society as an autistic child with that body, with that body and the type of things that I went through because of that body. I had no understanding of why my body was doing that to me. However, now as a fully grown adult woman, you guys look at my, my uh, what is it? My YouTube channel. I got titties out for days. It's a size J. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to dress how I want to dress only because I have that nasty, nasty history when it comes to my body. I was never free. I never, even as a kid, wore a bikini to a beach or like I just didn't have that kind of experience. I hated it because of the kind of attention it got. Grown women would be trying to fight my preteen ass. Grown women, mothers, aunts at my school, head up on site, leaning up out of their windows, cussing me out, and I'm a damn child. I'm a whole child. Middle school, high school, because of that body. So once I went through my whole modesty thing and I got a hold of who I am as a person, <sighs> I, but here's what I will say now on social media, I will wear the low cut, whatever tight, whatever. But even as a person who prefers to dress like that now, when I actually leave the house journey to Jasmine will tell you, I was, all my skin was covered. Now what I had on was tight, but all of my skin, every inch was covered because I now understand the implications of what it means to have thunder thighs and a big behind and a size J bra. It's not always nice and you have to accept that. I say that to say this about the body of this girl. Even if she had on more clothing, even if she had on more clothing, people would treat her differently because of how she is built. Hold on. Let me ask you this. We're not talking. So this is about her asking him, would you take me on a date? She's walking up to him dressed like that, asking him, would you take me on a date? Would you take me out to eat? And would you take me shopping? I love his answer. I love his answer because he was gentle and he was honest and women benefit from knowing how men think. This is way too much. Let's say if she wore a dress, he might've been like, this is the kind of woman I wanna marry. You know, She seems like a sweet girl, articulate, smart, whatever, but because she's presented like this, you can only do one thing she has hidden from you. If she has any wifely quality, she has hidden them from you. A lot of people say this about Sukihana when they meet her. They're like, she's so respectful and traditional. This girl cooks, she cleans, she brags about being a good stay-at-home body. But because Sukihana has presented how she has, people didn't know how to treat her with all the virtue that Sukihana has in real life. So you end up doing yourself a disservice. And my thing is, you have the right to do yourself a disservice. You just have to understand the implications of your actions. Me personally, as much as I like to be immodest, I was a school teacher for a decade. So when I say I wouldn't want this around no damn around any kids, I mean that. When I say I wouldn't want you showing up to my church, I don't care whose God said come as you are, I wouldn't want that. When you are forcing small children to have these, you know, feelings and and experiences with you, like it, it, just by merit of how you show up, I feel like that's wrong. So there's a place, there's a time and a place for everything under the sun. There are places she can go to dress like that and it's okay. There are nightclubs, there are strip clubs, there are private parties, there's there's Diddy and his people, there's all kind of places where you can, you know, but you got to tell them no. <laughs> you got to tell them, Diddy gonna wanna party and you gotta tell them no. <laughs> Ah!
Well, Are you gonna top. get swallowed? Don't stop. Swallowed. You gotta go through a time of swallowing. <laughs> but I'm I'm here for the right to wear what you want to wear, but not everywhere you want to wear it, and that's where I will end. And I said what I said. And she said what she said. Thank you, Uppity, for that beautiful background. You got a love flowing through. A lot of love flowing through for you in the chat. Moderators, what are y'all doing? And I'm saying that for a reason. If you see the chat, I'm asking. See, we have mods for a reason. We have mods for a reason. If you see the chat, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Mods, come on now. Come on now. That's your sister. Don't let nobody attack your sister. Get on your business, moderators. You don't need my permission to put a to put a a, a a a a hit dog down when they're roaming through the chat and they tearing your sister up left and right. Handle that shit. It shouldn't have went on that long. I just wanted to see if anybody was gonna get on it, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. With that being said, welcome to the stage, Journey to Jasmine. I mean, come on, like they they just tore like uppity up, whomever that is, and y'all just letting it go and go and go. I'm sorry, but that's why I pick moderators. Y'all are my snipers. Y'all supposed to be in there handling business. Don't you right, nobody, Queen? Don't let nobody come in here and and take one of like and 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 tear a moderator. She's a moderator of mine. Y'all supposed to be having her back. They didn't call her all kind of names over and over, and it just it just. I said, I'm gonna see if my moderators go handle this. But let me pause because I'm about to get heated. Journey to Jasmine, welcome. Thank you, Queen. And I'm, I apologize. I didn't I didn't actually see that person at first. Um, my best friend had literally called me just now and she wanted me to send her the link to the live. So we was talking about that. So I didn't see them. But no, no once I saw them, I did take them out the chat because we ain't got time. For I that. appreciate that. I fight in real life. But anyway, okay. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> no, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> thank you for letting me back up here. Um, this conversation in particular, I had to come back because it is I don't want to say triggering. But it brought up so many different things. So one, let me address the act this actual video. So she asked him, uh, where where would you take me, right? Like where would you take me on a date? Yeah, and she showed up. It's you know, it's one of those little things where you show up and they get the pig. It's almost like when yeah. y'all swipe left or right, but she showed up like that <clears throat> to get chose. Go ahead. Yeah. So she had the nerve to ask him, like, basically, where would you take me on a date? And I'm just thinking, where can he take you on a date? Most places have dress codes, no shoes, no shirt, no service. I mean, some places even still have the no mask, no service. So you mean to tell me you're going to come dressed up in lingerie, not just any old lingerie, a thong on top of all that. And he's supposed to take you somewhere, baby. The only place he can take you is Onyx. That's the only place y'all can go. And I'm I'm not one for like I I know like my generation in particular and really Gen Z, they be ugh, real bad on that um whole, you know, kind of like do what thou wilt type type of stuff. And I guess, but at the end of the day, you can't control how, how the other person perceives you. You know, so why wouldn't you want to put your best foot forward? And now I'm I'm not one to dress for the male gaze or anything like that. I, I'll just put it up on my Instagram yesterday. I dress how I want to dress, like how I'm feeling that day. But also how you dress a lot of times reflects how you feel about yourself. So this is an indication of how she feels. And so about herself, she must feel like this is her value. This, her value is in her sexuality, not her intellect not her kindness, not her heart, none of that. So since that's how she showed up, I'm not I'm not condemning him for saying, hey, yeah, I'm gonna take you home for a good time because that's what, how you showed up for a good time, you know? And, and like I said, I do understand like the whole, you know, women should be able to dress how, how we want to without uh, being demonized and attacked. Well, She's dressing how she wants to, and he's not attacking her. He didn't try to R her or anything like no. that. He just he was told her. Nice. He was, he very, was very nice, very respectful, right? And more respectful, way more respectful than a lot of guys um, that I've encountered fully dressed. So, you know, I just don't, 
maybe in a lot of times i think a lot of stuff is just skits to get reactions out of people but even if it wasn't like i really don't understand what her end game uh was here uh and like uppity was saying you know being being a well-endowed person like well-endowed person from like a young age and like i've I literally went to sleep flat chested and then grew up <laughs> or woke up the next morning with a full size G. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> and um just you know, experiencing how men and women have been um have treated me because of my body. Like it it's just such a weird position to be put in, but to then provoke them even more by dressing like this and then wanting one a certain level of respect now granted you should respect everybody but you can't want wifey stuff acting like a one night stand that's just that's kind of like my thing do what you want to do but you cannot control the other person and in this case she lucky that he's a nice guy apparently that's all i got to say on that all right. And she stood on business and she said what she said. Thank you, Jasmine, for handling that, that, that situation. And for sure, that's my sis. You. Yeah, we appreciate your wisdom and your thoughts that you, you were able to share regarding what you can do as a woman, but here's what you can't expect. You know what I'm saying? And that was real talk. So we appreciate you. Fast. Thank you, Queen. Peace. Absolutely. Have a good Saturday. Miss Dorothy, you ready? And then Cheryl Howard is last. Miss <laughs> Dorothy, welcome. Yes, welcome. Oh. You you muted yourself. You got so excited. Oh. You there you go. I'm unmuted. First of all, Queen, you're the goat. Secondly, I'm gonna stand on standards. As women of today, we have to hold ourselves to standards. If you pick a standard and you pick a goal, keep your goal. You don't let no man, no individual change your goal. You do it and you be successful in what you do. Like you say, give give that one percent every day. If you just give one, you headed towards your goal. Now Queen, I have my whole job listening to you. Oh wow. Well you I have the listen you can't talk about them on Saturdays. <laughs> no 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 I don't talk about them because they they love the Lord and they love me and we talk about topics and different topics and oh, I have on. learned so I have head. learned so much from you. Ms. And Martin, I just, yes what department don't tell me where you work just tell me what department y'all in. Well I work for the uh a I, center that deal no I'm not gonna tell you where I work at I work okay. for a center dealing with kids, adults, and children with disabilities. All right. Shout out to Miss Dorothy's co-workers. We appreciate y'all in the palace. Miss Dorothy, she didn't put y'all up on game. Happy Saturday to all of Miss Dorothy's friends that are at work. Y'all make sure y'all got her some donuts and coffee next Saturday, baby. And I said what I said. Go ahead, Miss Dorothy. And I said what I said is because I've been on this palace for about eight months and I had to give my daughter them to finally get me connected because I'm like I'm shabby I don't know how to do computers as well but I'm learning and I'm learning a lot and I give praise and honor to you hands 10 hands down 10 toes up you are touching touching many a people and I said what I said all right. And we love you, Miss Dorothy. And thank you for bringing your whole department with you, Queen. That's how you make a movement up in this month. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And they love it. They love it. All right. We love you, Miss Dorothy. You too. Have a good weekend. Okay. You too. Miss Dorothy's going to drop down and T Yahoo ask if I could play the video one more time. Here we go. Me on our first date. You. If you dress like that, we're going to the crib first. And then we could do whatever after that. If it depending on how that goes. <sighs> I know you didn't want me to get up there and lie to you. No, of course not. I don't like lies. But question. Mm -hmm. Why would you be taking me to your house? Shit, what's wrong with your hotel or something? No. B and B. No. <laughs> shit, car shit, like that too. Wait, oh my god, am I like selling sex to you? I mean, I just feel like, you know, I look good. You look good. 
But it shouldn't. You make money. It shouldn't. Yeah, I make money. I'm a. You look real good. Right. Like this is this is like walking beauty. But like you know, I have mad respect for myself. Where would you take me on the date? Is that your answer? We can go get some food wherever you like. Where would you take me? I said wherever you like. I'm real like. Just whatever I want. Yeah. What if I want to go shopping? Damn, you're going to have to call somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to have to. Booty just hanging out. Booty meat. Just listen. <laughs> Cheryl, what are your thoughts? Oh, Let me be quiet. Cheryl. Uh, hello, how you doing, Queen? How you doing, Queen? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Woo. How can you come out here looking thotty, looking like a thot? Because being a thot ain't hot. And you out here looking raunchy and you want to go to a five star restaurant. She has no respect for herself, for one. You know, and I, if I was him, I would put her back on the corner where she came from because that's what she looks like. And it's just. To, to, to not respect yourself as a woman, to put yourself out there, you know, the, the more you show, the more attention you get. But she getting she's she going to get all the wrong attention. He was a nice guy. Not all guys are nice like him. He needed to put her right back on that corner where she came from because that's what she looked like. Just no respect. I mean, women feel they can show and they leave nothing to a man's imagination. Then when they get disrespected, then they say, the man disrespected them. She disrespected herself. Her, her ass is all out. She looked nasty. She looks really nasty. You know, put her back on the corner where she came from, sir. That's where you put her. Let one of those tricks buy her something. Because she looks, it's just disrespectful as a woman to be out here looking like that. And women, women you know, some of these women don't respect themselves, you know, just as a person, you know, to be showing everything. You know, and he seen her, he was honest. He see her, how she look. She look like a thought. She's, she's, she's just raunchy. She wouldn't go to chick I wouldn't take her to Chick-fil-A. Nowhere. I wouldn't take her nowhere. Hey, you keep Chick-fil-A out of this. I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> yeah, but she just don't have no respect for herself. And then they want respect. You, you got to give respect if you want respect. And the way she's dressed, raunchy. Just raunchy. Put it back on the corner. Put it back on the corner, young man. That's where she belong. That's my opinion. And I said what I said. All right. She said what she said. <laughs> Thank you for coming up, Cheryl. You're welcome. Gonna... Thank Cheryl you. Down. And bring up Miss Debbie. Welcome to the stage. What are your thoughts, Miss Debbie? Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Queen. <laughs> good afternoon. Uh, <laughs> well, the lady dressed like that. If I was him, I would think it was a joke or something. And I would have ran because it looks like trouble. And, you know, we just don't need trouble. So that's what I would have done if I was a young man. Or if I was feeling funny, I would have told her we go go on bowling. Why don't you put on a T-shirt and jeans and try to get to know her and would let her know you don't have to dress like that to attract that's a good idea, Yeah, Miss Tabby. Keep going. You know, I, that's why I would have done. You don't have to do that. Less is more, you know, you can, you can be beautiful. Just be yourself. He said, I'm not here for your body tonight. I want to get to know your mind. What's going on? And I said what I said, and I stand on the business. I love that. I love how you came in and you gave a solution for both genders, the male and the female. You told her, listen, young lady, blah, blah, blah. And then you said, if I were him, I would run because that's trouble. But if you wanted to take her out, tell her, listen, we're going to go bowling. Why don't you put on a T-shirt and some jeans? And that's wisdom that's priceless, y'all. And that's why we have the mothers of the palace, like a Miss Debbie and Aunt Natty and all of these beautiful women and men that come in and pour wisdom out on us that could give us a different perspective. And that's why we appreciate you, Aunt Debbie. God bless you, and you have a beautiful Saturday. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Wasn't that beautiful? I, I love, look, that's right. That's that old school game. Look, where both parties can win. It's a win-win no matter what. And that's what wisdom is, y'all. And that's what wisdom does. It creates peace. It brings things and people together. Aset, I know you said you, oh, Aset just dropped down. Are you on there? Did I bring you up? 
she just dropped down. It said you dropped down literally as I was clicking your name, but we're going to go to blessing 24. What are your thoughts? Blessing, you're on mute. You're on mute. Blessing, my check, one, two, three. Blessing, 24, you're on the sage. I'll give you five, four, three, two, and one. Let's take blessing down. Peace, love, and prayers. Welcome. What are your thoughts? Good morning. Good morning, Palace. And I do apologize for that typo earlier. Um, okay. We really don't come up on panels because I can be very passionate about some of the discussions. However, this um, particular subject, I would just like to share women and Palace, young men as well. I am in an a big age of 64. So I've seen a lot, I've done a lot, I've been a lot. And when this is displayed or when we represent ourselves, no matter what our ages are, we are adoring ourselves in a way that we want to be received. So my question is, or my statement would be, what is it, the, the expectation that you get based on how you present yourself. It's almost like decorating a Christmas tree. How you want to be received, whether it's seriously, whether it's in a, um, a fundamental state, comes from how we represent ourselves and how we present ourselves. Perception, expectation, all of those things are wrapped up in what you put in front of a person's visual first, even before you open your mouth to speak. So when, you, like you said, you can't take this look into a church house, a business room, or a, board, uh, a boardroom. You can take it to a bedroom. So how you're perceived is going to dictate to how you treat it and where you can enter. Ask yourself where you're going. Prepare yourself for where you're going. And then be bold about your statement. I said what I said. All right. And she said what she said. And we appreciate you blessing us with that wisdom, peace, love, and prayers. And let me tell you something. Honey, we get passionate over here, too. You hear my reviews, so it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank all you. Right. And I love you all so much. Okay. God bless you. Have a wonderful Saturday. Blessing 24. Let's try this again. Mic check. One, two, three. Blessing Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, Lord, finally, child. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Queen Sheba. Yes, ma'am. I love you. I love oh, you. Thank you. I have been with Melody. I have been. I was married to a narcissist. Who his way of keeping us together was him picking a gun. Three different occasions threatened to kill himself because he felt we weren't giving him enough attention in front of my kids. Once he re once I realized what his game was, I got over my fear and I stopped entertaining it. The next time he pulled a gun, I said, make sure you drive away from my house when you do it because I don't want blood stain in my driveway. Once I told him that he realized fear was no longer holding me back. Upon us trying to get it, upon us getting a divorce, he moved in my basement and literally lived in my basement until the divorce was finalized and I was able to get him out of my house. A narcissist will do anything to keep you around in fear for a long time. I was fearful for my life and my children. By the grace of God, I was able to get up one day and say, you know what? You do whatever you have to do. And I'll let God deal with you. Once I stopped giving him attention, and stopped falling into his trap. He started talking bad about me. He became a victim. This is a man who would not stop cheating throughout our whole marriage. 
God prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. The woman that got him caught, that called me, ended up getting him arrested. Years at three years after my divorce, she became his enemy. So when you not when you get a chance to leave a man who is a narcissist, a sociopath, this man don't care nothing about his children. He will use his kids, my kids, to hurt me. I have a child who has mental problems. He told my child, you know the only reason your mother is stressed is because of you. When my child wanted to unalive himself so he could relieve me from the stress. He turned everything and made that child felt like he was the problem. Martel don't care about his children. Martel don't care about mother. And they're not capable of loving a woman. My ex-husband did not like women. They will use you for whatever they need, but they don't know what love is. So if Melody got a chance to leave, she left, that was the best thing she could have done. And that's what's killing him right now because he doesn't have that source to feed on. Because remember, narcissists need somebody to so they can suck everything out of you. And so you're able to get up and leave. All he did was find somebody else. And that's why he's going to always have a around. Because he always needs somebody to stop on. If you meet my ex-husband, you think he's the best thing in the world. But the more you talk to him, if you have a common sense, you will see that something is off with him. So when I see Martel, all the stuff that he's doing, that's PTSD to me because that's my ex-husband. So that's all I have to say. God is good. Yes, he is. And she's all right. And my babies will be okay. We appreciate you coming up, Blessings 24, and you got a lot of positive affirmation reinforcing you in the chat. So thank you so much. God bless you, and you have a wonderful Saturday. You too. You too. Okay. Bye, everyone. Blessings 24 is going to drop down, everybody. And we are going to, let's see, bring up the review hour. The review hour. Diva Therapeutics, you're up next. Uh, welcome to the stage. The review hour, what are your thoughts? Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I guess I'm coming up here to stand on business. <laughs> you go uh, right ahead. I want to talk about, um, first of all, I want to tell Uppity is that, girl, you're beautiful. Your hair beautiful. Your face beautiful. Your body beautiful. You are one beautiful black woman. And I don't like, I know that black people, you know, us, we have fallen into this uh, society uh, imagery of what we are supposed to be. If our butts are too big, we can't wear anything to compliment it or we'll be considered uh, loose or we're wearing it too tight. We're trying to attract the wrong type of uh, man. I'm gonna have to crank my car up. Somebody wants to park right up to my door. <laughs> and, um, so that that's a problem for me. You know, we have a right. Don't get me wrong. I know there there's a, a a time and a place to dress a certain way. To me, that has nothing to do with our bodies or what we can attract. You know, black women, most of us, we are blessed to have big butts, uh, breasts, hips. And for some reason, when we want to display that, you know, and this this is not just happening now. If everybody go back and look up the caricature, uh, Sapphire, and this was used to uh, put black women down. If we had black, you know, big butts and big breasts, it made it seem as if it was an oddity, that it was weird, that it's cartoonish. 
And now, even up until this day, people are still making us feel that way. You know, like Uppity said, you know, she was made to feel like this since she was a child. This beautiful black woman who was a beautiful black young girl was made to feel useless or made to feel like she was doing something wrong because God created her body. So, no, I do not agree with if a woman wants to display her body, she has that right. But on the other side of that coin, you have to know there are some people that have bought into that sapphire uh, caricature for black women, and they may not agree with you, and they may look at you in a total different way. So you got to be able and be tough to take that and, and be yourself. You know, you have to know that's going to come. But for the black women out there with their big butts and wide hips and uh, breasts to go with it, kink your hair to go with it, long or short, you know, be proud. Be proud. Don't look for anyone to validate you. Don't. I hate that she even asked that man if that's true. You know, if that's how the scenario go. No, you don't. He doesn't validate you. Don't look for validation when it comes to your body. God created you. And I said what I said. <laughs> All right. She said what she said. She said validation is not outside of you, but inside of you. We thank you, the, re the review hour. I appreciate your thought and your wisdom, your thought leadership and your wisdom. Happy Saturday to you, Queen, and I hope to see you soon. All right. Diva Therapeutics, what are your thoughts? Bravo Addiction Bravo. Vivian, you're up next. You're up next. Hey, Queen, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am great. I love that you are bringing you real low, Mama. Get that volume up because they're not going to be able to hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, do you have some plan in the background? No. You got an echo. So, what are you using? A phone, computer, or a television? Tablet. I caught you at work. There we go. You got the floor. Okay. There you go. Okay. I had to move at the job to the place where, you know. Okay. So I appreciate all you the You went back to low. Oh, gosh. Stay still when you get to where you're going. Do you hear me now? I can hear you, but it's low. Okay. I'm going to drop down and come back up. Okay. I'm going to go to I'm going to go to Vivian. And I'm going to drop you down. All right. Bravo Addiction Vivian. Welcome. What are your thoughts? Um, hey, Queen Shiva. Hey, Chad. Hey. Um, Uppity, you are so sweet and so beautiful. And um, I'm sorry you went through that. Um, me and my daughters and my sisters, we went through similar things and stuff. And uh, the grace of God, because there are some really... Um, uh, there's some mean people out in this world. You know, there's some wonderful, good, and amazing people too. But uh, mean people seek people out, no matter what. There's something wrong with them. They are dealing with their own mess, and um, it's too much for them, so they take it out on whoever. Um, you know, Melody is a prime example of that. She's she's faced jealousy from women and men, including her ex. But um, so I came into the palace late and I was running around trying to find my glasses because I was trying to read the caption under Miss um, Thing's um, uh, little video. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, really? <laughs> You really are like he he decided that he didn't want to take you to a restaurant or a nice place because you, and look at her body language. She's covering the front of her body. That is a defense mechanism uh, mechanism. Girl, you're not comfortable. You're not comfortable with what you have on. Seriously, I was like really shocked. But the thing about it is that then I started thinking about um, some of the Real Housewives, um, some of the um, uh, popular stars, you know, like Cardi, 
when she's in her videos, she's dressed the same way and everything. But when you see her out and about, you know, showing up to events and stuff, she's in like couture. So this, there's a difference about, to me, how you present yourself. You're not presenting yourself to go to a fancy restaurant dressed like that. It shouldn't even be a question. You, you know what his response is going to be. No. Now, when he said we're going to the crib first, mate, to me that was a little little cringe, but you know, he's being honest. So I appreciate that. But my point is this, in my opinion, I think that we should show up for what we want. And if you want to be treated like a queen, show up as a queen. If you want to be treated like a peasant, show up like a peasant. We've seen it. We can ask Sourslaw how she's treated. And I said what I said. And she said what she said. I appreciate you, Bravo uh, Bravo Addictions, Vivian. Y'all, she covers all things Bravo TV, and you can find her on Instagram. <laughs> We appreciate you and you have a beautiful, beautiful Saturday, Vivian. You do the same. Thank you. Okay, God bless you. So we're going to drop you. Vivian down and then we're going to bring up Miss Karen. And then Diva, we're going to see if we can um, recycle. Make Diva, they said when you click on StreamYard, make sure you're that you X out of YouTube. And if you have a tablet, make sure that you turn down that volume. Kira. I don't know what you pushing, but you didn't push yourself out of here. Karen, don't touch nothing else, Karen, when you come back up. Drop down and come back. Diva Therapeutics, welcome. Can you hear me now? Oh, praise the Lord. Hold on. I got to <laughs> give you a hallelujah because, baby, Look, I, tell you. I had to get the I said, let me go get my cell phone and go back to the back. <laughs> huh. I'm at work. I'm at the Hallelujah. Back. Yes. Okay. I had to catch y'all because I miss y'all. And I was like, I, I'm I'm listening to my show today. I know that's <laughs> right. Okay, you got the floor. I'm gonna be quiet. Okay. So I work in a clothing store. So I work in a women's clothing store, and it's a store that's intentionally set in urban communities. So I see women come in. And there's a thing with being in bondage to letters and numbers. Okay. And I tell them now, when they now, there's a when thing I, when it comes to being in bondage to letters, to and, letters numbers. and numbers. And then these certain images also. I've noticed this trend. If you miss mention the word plus, their faces cringe. And I'm like, oh my God. So I renamed the plus size in the store to the grown and sexy plus cute and curvaceous. Oh, and they don't even know it's plus size. That's right. Because the plus is in there. I'm like, it, oh, did y'all get it? She put, say it again, slow. This is what she did. She said the people that come in the store are really plus size. But when she presented huh? that to them, they have this adverse reaction to it. So what she did. She got very innovative and renamed the section to grown and sexy plus cute and curvaceous. Plus, she put a plus sign in the middle. Girl, if that is not creative, keep going. So I get these, the people come in and they're saying a lot of them are losing weight or going through sizes, going up or going down. Cause you know, retail is like therapy. And I listen to them. And I'm like, you're beautiful. Girl, love your curves. And the beauty is you. The clothes are just a cover. You're the beauty. Clothes don't make you beautiful. They just accentuate the beauty that you are. You just got to love yourself as you are, wherever you are. Be your size. You're uniquely made. Your size is your size. Just be you. So it helped with some of them and others, like even with large, extra large, or even medium and small, 
if they go up a letter or a number, they cringe. And I just want and pray that we start teaching our young women that we're going to get what fits your size. Your size is perfect because it's yours. You're uniquely made not to be like anyone else, not to be anyone else. You're uniquely made to be you. And this is just covering. What is really you is your essence and your aura. You're priceless. There's no amount of money, no amount of name brand, because the greatest name is your name. Nobody's name is better than yours. And so it's just conversations we've been having in the store with different people. So I just, you know, the young lady, how she's dressed and she asked the question. I kind of get she was posing a question and she wanted him to say what she wanted to validate what she felt about herself. My prayer for her is that she be able to accept truth because I don't think he was truthful with her. He switched his answer to I take you anywhere because then as hunters, men will change what they say to accomplish what they want. But why did he change it? Because she didn't accept his. She would ask him a question. Mm -hmm. He gave it to her and then she pushed back. So he, right. he changed his answer. Listen to this, ladies. Mm -hmm. When he told her, she kept pushing to get what she wanted. He told her the That's truth, he but she wanted the lie because she was validating herself. She wanted to be validated instead of walking in. Like, if you're wearing whatever you're wearing and you say this you, be prepared to stand 10 toes down in the you you're presenting. Yep. And that shouldn't have anything to do with the response of people's because you didn't ask for people responses to pick what you were going to wear. You wore what you like. So be 10 toes down with what you have and understand that when truth comes to you and you asking for someone else's opinion, you got to accept the truth of what they're saying. So then when the man told her the truth, he said, I'm taking you home. And she say, am I selling sex to you? You already know the truth. That's why you said that sentence because you want to say that sentence. If you didn't already know that that's what, what he's saying, you know, he's saying I'm taking you home because you're presenting to me something that I'm craving. He doesn't know anything else about her to crave anything else about her. She knows who she is, but he ain't had a conversation with her. He don't know if she's intelligent. He doesn't know if she's smart. He doesn't know if she's a good house manager. He knows nothing about her. So what else? Does he have to go off of to make a decision on what he's going to do with her? That's true. So just some food for thought. And please don't be in bondage to letters and numbers. Very powerful lesson. I mean, you literally gave us something that we have not been exposed to before, but that's your, that's your field of profession. And she really came. She came with it today, y'all. Check the chat. Hit replay. There was a lot dropped and shared by Diva Therapeutics. Thank you, Queen. We appreciate you. Thank you. I'm going back to work. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right, go back to work. All right. Don't get in trouble now. Now, Miss Karen, don't you hit nothing except mute. All right. Hold on. Let me bring you to the stage. Go real slow, Miss Karen, and hit the microphone unmute button. Oh, Lord Jesus, she it dropped her again, y'all. Some Miss Miss Karen, you gonna have to tell one of your uh one of your kids or grandkids to teach you how to use social media. That's all right. Beverly M, welcome to the stage. Good morning, Queen Sheba and the Palace. This is my first time up, and I hope you can hear me. Yep, we can hear you. Um. I am going to be 67 in another month. I normally um, don't come up on these shows, but I love your show. And when I saw this clip, I just wanted to come up and make a comment. Um, first of all, when I first saw it, what came to my mind was the show What Not to Wear. And I'm not sure if anybody has seen that show before, but whenever they would talk to people about their clothing, they would also talk about getting inside of their minds because it's a mindset not only what you're wearing on the outside, but what you're thinking about on the inside, especially how you're perceived by other people. And many people thought they really looked good, but they really didn't. And the first place that they want to start was with themselves, their own self-image. 
Um, that was what came to my mind. And another thing that came to my mind is just these clips in general. Um, I know this is probably for a learning lesson. They have these little clips where they bring people on and they have different people come on and give their impressions. But sometimes it's a little disappointing as to the content that we keep seeing over and over. Um, I do understand it brings topics to discussion that we need to talk about, but I'm not even sure if, and I could be wrong because I'm not out in the streets that way. If women are women really dressing a lot like this, that it's become a topic <laughs> for us to talk about. Hold on. Was that a question for me? Um, is that is that you asking me a question, Queen? Yes. I said, did you have a question for me? Because you just paused. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on with my phone here. I didn't hear anything coming back, so I didn't even know if you could hear me. Oh, no, no, no. I just let you talk. Go ahead. Did you? That's what I'm saying. Did you have a question specifically for me? Sorry about that. I guess, well, I guess it's for the whole palace. Um, oh, they're, they're in the audience. They can't respond, but go ahead. Keep going. Okay. Uh, the question was, since this scenario came up about a woman dressing this way and asking how the men would take them out, is it, are women really going out dressed this way was my question. Are they really going dressed this way a lot? Some are. I mean, let me tell you why. I live in Houston, Texas. And look, Rankin Road, West Mount Houston, <laughs> Jordan, Jordan, and anybody in Houston can tell you, Stake 48, that's why I had mute, because my dog's out there barking. Stake 48, it had gotten so bad, y'all, in high-end restaurants that these girls were coming in, dressed, I'm sorry, I'm going to put it out there, like Little Thought Thoughts, Escorts and Prostitutes, Ella Boulevard, all of it. Listen, at high-end steakhouses, now... <clears throat> dressed so bad like prostitutes that they had to enforce a dress code. Imagine that in these restaurants. Not only did they have to enforce a dress code, they also had to enforce a take a head limit because these girls see there's this um let me tell you this Miss Beverly I, I hope I'm getting it the word in English there's this subgroup of women that are actually selling themselves in more sophisticated ways. And what they do is they go to these high-end restaurants and they position themselves and they buy one drink and they sit all day long waiting for the men to come in and, and, and you know, make a proposal and then they leave. The restaurants started to catch on in Houston. So you're not doing that anymore. What they do now is you, some restaurants, you, it has to be $150 that you spend off, off grip, off top, $150 a head, period, point blank, because that's why the waits would be so long and extended and you couldn't get in sometimes because all these young thoughts were in there basically showcasing themselves to the highest bidder. Yes, they do go dressed out like that. Ass, cheeks, booty, nipples, all of that hanging out and not giving a damn, not giving a damn because number one, sex sells. And they, they're so smart now. Now they know where these men's, these men are. You know what? They're in the steakhouses. And they don't just want any man. They want the ones that can afford a particular level of restaurant because they feel like if you in this restaurant, then you could afford me or you could afford a night with me. So, yes, they are. They are dressing like that. But I respect businesses that are saying you can be liberated, but you can't be liberated here. We got a business to run and we want everybody to come in and have a good time. And we want you to look good and we want you to look beautiful, but not to the point that you're disrupting everybody's experience. What are your thoughts? Oh, she dropped down. Damn. Okay. But that's my, um, that's my, um, yeah, that's, that's my, um, my response to your question. Anybody else before we leave? Yep, they are going out dressed like that. Some restaurants allow it. I wouldn't allow it. If I had a restaurant, no, you're not coming in like that. And not because I don't think you're beautiful, but there's a time and a place for everything. Because once you start to, what do they call? Um, 
I don't want to call it corrupt. That's not the word I'm looking for. You could just bring the level of a place down if you're not careful, right? If you're not careful. Sharon, welcome to the stage. What are your thoughts? Sharon, I got you on. You ready? Okay, good downstairs. Okay, hit mute. Uh -huh. I put you on mute because you weren't ready. Yeah, but that's what a lot of that goes on. Because Houston is like Hollywood, honey. Houston, and there's a lot of ballers. There's a lot of athletes. There's a lot of rappers. There's a lot of everything. Sharon, come off mute when you're ready. If not, I'll go to the next person. Right there. Um, okay, yes. There you go. Um, but, yes. Um, it doesn't matter how you dress. Usually back in the day, it, you were dressing for the date. You know, dressing you be, be, put your best foot forward, and some of these, I think they're really. This is what I tell people. I look at the female when I walk in in the restaurant or in a mall, a good nice mall, and I look how the women dress and look at the men dress. And I remember me and my husband walking out, and I would look at these different women, and they would have short short dress on, regardless of the size they are in, <laughs> the size who they are. There are men just walking next to them and nothing, nothing wrong. And my husband was like, what's going on here? I said, if her man likes it and her man and her is out and about, that's on their relationship. And I think some of you guys have seen this when the female is dressed very sexy and they are very sexy. And, and sometimes the dress and skirts are really high up. You know, and I always look at the man, but then I would remember this. That's her man. If he is, if he thinks it's okay for her to go out like that, that's on the relationship. And and I do think about the the video you showed, the young lady. She wasn't confident what she had on at all, because there's I've seen females who dress like that or had like shimmy stuff on. They dress confident. They don't hold themselves in. They don't. But I like try to cover themselves, you know, when they, when when this happened. And some and some men who in a shock, like not sure what to do, they are hesitate to even say anything what they have on to take them out. Yeah, but but now men have. A, what do you think about this? And Braylon Lee, you're next. Now men have so much money. Most of them now. Well, yeah. I, where I live, they do. They don't care. They'll take you out. You know what? I'll, I'll get you some cream spinach. I'll get you a filet because I know you don't really have it like that. And you know what? I'll get you a shrimp cocktail. And and that's just, you know, and I'm, I might get you a little lemon drop or two to get what I need from you. And I'm never calling you again. There's, there's some men that are willing to pay the price for a good time. What are your thoughts yeah. about that? This for what well, I would tell young ladies or any woman, if what you put out there is what you think you're gonna get, is what you're gonna get. All right. I'm in. A, I have a, a male friend. He went. You know, he's single. He's you know, he's older. He's forty some years old. Um, he divorced. He going out. He going. He been out a little bit, not much. So he did. One lady. She thought everything was fine at work. She dressed nice and everything. Went out on a date. Going picking her up. She had on a shimmy outfit, and he had to look at her like this is the first time he's seen her. And he had to, you know, he himself, he said, you know what? I don't think this is right for us. I don't think, you know, now I said, you know, I'm sorry, I, I do a rain check. Or, you know, you know, he just canceled the date. And he asked me, was he wrong or right? I said, well, it's up to you how you want to carry that person around you. And he did to me. He did the right thing because that was not his person. That was not his style. Of woman and again at the at the workplace, she dressed nice and everything. So he's like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's all I yeah. say about that. Well, thank you for coming up. We appreciate yeah. you, Sharon. Thank you. All right, Sharon's gonna drop down. Braylon Lee, welcome to the stage. What are your thoughts? Oh, my Lord Jesus. Hey, Queen Sheba. Good to see you, beautiful, as always. Hey, Chad. Um, I saw this clip. And, you know, the words of Todd Chrisley, he was on Steve Harvey. 
And he said the most perfect quote. I can't believe he said this on daytime TV. He said, I'm not saying that you're a 304. I'm saying you exhibiting 304 behavior. And to be honest with you, when I saw that outfit, I'm like, if you have to show off, there's no show for me to tune into. Um, and I think it's really sad that in this world we live in today, that we are so about image that we're not about soul. And I have joked plenty of times <laughs> about what I like, but also too, if there's nothing of value that I can receive for me to be better, then why should I have value and put it in you? Um, that's what we call responsibility. So to me, it's quite sad. And honestly, I think this is why some people are not dating. And it's difficult for me, Queen Sheba, because I, I mean, you, 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 we've experienced each other plenty of times. Um, I was raised by a mom and dad that, you know, they taught me to open up the door <laughs> for women. Every time we go out, I always open up the door for my mom. And it's to the point where, you know, when I do it, my dad does it. I'm that person that, you know, when we're out, if we're a group of friends or if I was down at the um, Melamia's event, even, y even though y'all full grown women, hey, text somebody when you get back to the hotel. I'm that dude. And I think that that goes to home training, but it goes beyond home training. Some people just don't care about being responsible for what they do. Because, you know, it's the scripture of, you know, investing your child so that way they won't depart. At some point in time, you have to be responsible for what you do. And some people just don't care about their home training. Some people don't care about having a legacy. So. So, yeah. All right. I, hey, listen, I agree. And I saw that you made a goddess. You're up next. I saw you made a comment. You're like $150 per head. Yes, they had to because restaurants lose money. When you think about, think about when you want to go out to eat Braylon and anybody else in the chat and you'd be like an hour, an hour wait. It, it, sometimes they were like an hour and a half. The reason why it had gotten so crazy because they was parking in the parking mm. lot, not literally, but at these tables, like a group of girls eating off one appetizer and having one drink waiting for somebody to buy them around or to pick them up or buy, you know what I mean? It was just hideous. Right. Wow. These restaurants had to enforce because you're losing money when people Correct. are parking at these tables and they're not generating enough revenue for you to pay your servers for your, your servers have tip out. They got to tip out the bartender, the bus boys. You have to run a business. And wow. they were they were crippling profits, in my opinion, which led to the whatever price per head. So I just wanted to give. Wow. Away. No, I no, I appreciate that. I mean, I said in the comments, you know, one hundred fifty dollars a head to potentially give some head. Like, really, this is this is what we doing. OK. All right. I mean, you can go to Applebee's and get all you can eat wings for fourteen ninety nine and two five dollar margaritas. But OK. Anyway, love you, Queen Sheba. I'll see y'all soon. <laughs> all right. Have a good day. All right, goddess, Braylon's dropping down. Welcome to the stage. What are your thoughts? First and foremost, good morning, Queen Sheba, and hello to the palace. Good morning, Queen Sheba, and hello to the palace. I'm not sure if you could hear me. Yeah, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I'm good actually, morning. I'm actually I'm driving back and forth, and I guess I kept kicking myself out. I just want to take it first and further and say I'm in a real estate field. And I'm in the South Bay in California, which is Palo Alto area. Now we dress a little modest, but if you go to the LA area for real estate, some of these women, they dress like a hoe, I could say it, because they do. They are showing off everything that mama gave them except the vagina to get a sale. And if you go to certain part of the East Coast, some of them are dressed like that as well, not all agents. But I've, I'm finding that a lot of times, even when I go to, the, I've went to the East Coast event and I guy asked me what I did and I told him I was in real estate and he said, oh, so it's like you sell the P. And I was like, what? He was like, you sell pussy. Excuse my French. And I had to say, oh, you did? I had to say, no, I don't do that. I actually have a whole team underneath me that I manage and things like that. But I was just dumbfounded and he said, oh, okay, well, 
let me break it down for you. The women out here who say they're in real estate, there is one who are actually doing it and there is some who is actually giving it away. And I and I just, I, I, I didn't know how to take it. I didn't know if I was offended by it or if I was glad that he told me. So moving forward while I was visiting, I couldn't say my actual feel of career in a sense. So I stepped back from it. But I have been to Houston's where I've gone to the State 48 and the line is ridiculous. And the women who are dressed there, it was it's, it's to a point I said I would never go back to Houston just because of how they were dressed. Yes. And so if you, you know State 48 I'm I know, talking about. I know what you're talking about. And if they weren't yeah. dressed a certain way, um, the men would kind of look at you kind of funny too. And I had a friend who actually, um, she was a friend of a friend and she actually said, oh, you can't wear that out. You're too, you're dressed too nice. And I said, what's too nice? She said, oh girl, you got to show some skin. We just going for appetizer. We, she goes right now, I'm trying to get a, a new roster for a new person who's going to take me. What strictly did I tell you? Didn't I say appetizer? And I did not figure that out. I, I looked at her and I said, what? Because she wasn't my friend, but she was a friend of my friend. I was just meeting her. She said, I'm actually looking for a new person to fill the roster position of appetizer. And I, I was confused. So I was just like, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, you know, strictly for appetizer. I'm only going to be talking to him for appetizer. I already have my main entree. I already have my shopping person. And I and the way she broke it down, all I could say was, I, and, and I looked at her, I said, oh, um, I guess I'm too, I'm too dressed nice. I'll, I'll catch y'all later. I'm just going to stay back at my hotel. And I told it was one of the reasons I kind of re-established my friendship with my friend who, who at that time, well, she's not a friend no more, but I had to look at it differently. Because my mom always told me, birds of a feather flock together. And I didn't want to be part of that flock. So I had to ask myself, I said, you know what, let me go back to this friendship. Has she always been like this? Because why is she hanging around people like this? Because then you, people will assume you're like that too. But it's out here. There's some women who just have no morals, no values, no standards. And they're giving not just, it's not just black women. It's mixed women as well. But they're just giving women nowadays who want to date, like Braylon said, they're giving all of us a bad name. And we're not even throwing ourselves in a dating pool. We're just like effing. And my last thing I want to talk about is Martel Mother Effing Holt. I hope you get every karma that's coming to you. Every freaking karma that's coming to you. And also, Nicki Minaj, you had the nerve to bring up someone dead mother. I hope you get everything that the world has coming to you. And I said what I said. Thank you, Amen. Queen. And she said what she said. Girl, you just dropped some gems. And you validated and confirmed a lot of stuff of what we're talking about. Listen. I really want to say something, but I don't want to piss people off on Saturday about, I'm sorry, how black people are starting to corrupt some areas of work and real estate and just take things to a whole different level. And I'm going to say a lot of it is it isn't related to laziness. You know what? I don't really want to work. So I'm going to sell P and pretend to be a real estate agent. Oh, this is a good feel that men come and buy houses. You know what? Let me go put on some lingerie. Like you said, damn near dressed like hoes and pretend to sell a house and sell some coochie while I'm here. It's, it's ridiculous. And can y'all see why people hesitate to take us serious and do business with us? And not because of all of us, but that few one bad apple can spoil a whole bunch. And we're spoiling a whole bunch. You got restaurants that don't. I think it was Cookie from the Shot. They says they're changing up everything. They're they're setting the bar way up because they don't want us up in there. They don't want Negroes up in there because they say, ah, oh, you, you, you're taking it down. You know, you, you're kind of putting a damper on our establishment. You're putting a damper on this career field. Even the man asked you, what did he say? You selling pee? And you were like, what? So... We got to do better. I said that to say, we got to do better. Like, this is crazy. And we have no one to blame but ourselves. At this point, when people say, oh, they don't want to see us do, do good. Trust me, white people are not sitting around talking about us like you think they are. They laughing at you. But they ain't thinking of ways to block you. Because we, we're pretty much blocking ourselves now. We're pretty much blocking ourselves. I'll give you an example. When you go in and you sleeping with somebody's husband and tearing up families, you we're blocking ourselves. They ain't got to do nothing. We're cannibalizing on each other. And that's what I got to say off of what God has said. That was some, 
That was some good stuff. Thank you. We appreciate you. All right, Karen, come back. You just, it was your turn. Y'all, Miss Karen is, re she's relentless. Miss Karen has been trying to get on this live and her, her little thingy keeps going in and out. Let me go to my um queen. I'm going to let you go real quick and then I'm going to go to super chat and we up out of here. Queen, welcome to the stage. Yes. Hey, sis. I had to spin the block on this one with a uh, young lady. Something just uh, came to me. I don't know if you remember that one video that went viral of the gentleman who owned the restaurant and the sisters was twerking inside the restaurant, standing on the chairs. In Dallas. Twerking Texas. outside the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind of what this reminds me of as well when the other caller was talking about the real estate uh, situation where she did real estate and she was uh, propositioned to see if she was a solicitor of sex. And um, that, this, this sparked my, my memory because it, it really does devalue our, our work as far as a collective, you know, like we were talking about, because Again, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover, but you kind of get a good idea if you see what's on there. You know what I mean? On, on the front cover. And, and, and it just goes to that group think where it is kind of enabling for a lot of, you know, less than sane people to generalize women, especially black women who don't present themselves this way. I know I'm not, you know, very voluptuous. But I was back in that era of the supermodel. You know, everybody wanted a high fashion, runaway looking model. I'm a sleek type of kind of lengthy swimmer girl. I'm like the basketball chick. And I used to get teased a lot because I didn't have curves. But I still got solicited because that stigma that came along with skimpy attire, models always give it up for free. Models spelled backwards as a letter, right? And we have to be real careful how we present ourselves because a lot of people don't take us seriously even when we are standing on our business because of women like this, you know, who, who don't have the responsibility of modesty or class or even, you know, being taught that a woman should just present herself a certain way if she wants a certain type of treatment. Because, again, you, you, they treat you how they meet you. And I, I can't tell you how many struggles I've had just walking my dogs and I get propositioned, like, how much? And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm wearing camos and combat boots. What are you talking about? Right? And, I, again, I'm not that, that curvy chick. So it, it, it just circled back around to what we were saying. You have to really – it's internal. You have to love yourself in order to, for that to show and, and show up on the outside. And how you present yourself says everything. First, first impressions are everything. And we live in Western society. So it's like we were taught to cover yourself as modesty. That's just the, the norm. Everybody knows that. And you could say, well, a woman should be able to wear whatever she want to wear and not be mistreated. Well, we know that's not true because we have this all culture of where sex sales, drama, dysfunction, and toxicity is like the top tier thing to be to get the attention and the accolades and the props and the likes and the clicks and the views. And is it about a click in a view or is it about what's inside your soul at the end of the day? How do you feel when you look in the mirror? So I just wanted to throw that out there to see if anybody else remembered that video where those ladies went to. It. And it was a nice establishment, too. You know, and they just kept twerking and they were upset because they were asked to leave. And it's like you can't go in a certain type of venue and act like you're in a strip club or, or at the club on the dance floor. You know, and, and it, it, it's just, it's, it's really disturbing to think that, you know, nowadays we have to reteach all this all over again because of the standards, morals, and principles have really been placed in the toilet almost. So, again, one love. Thank you again. I'm long-winded. I appreciate you. Love you. And you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. You too. And thank you for coming up. We appreciate you, Queen. All right. So... That was a good word. Do y'all remember that video? And it was actually by, uh, it was a black owned business. Imagine y'all taking out your loan, your, your loan from the bank and you and your wife or you and your family, you know, sit down you do your business plan. You have your blueprint all set. You said, we're going to make a change. We're going to bring some, we're going to bring some high quality food decorum, all of this to the restaurant industry, the food and beverage industry, only to have people show up 
and think they finna tear your shit up. And he said, no, I need you to leave. Oh, it's this and this. No, you, we not doing that. Cause even though you may dress the way you dress in steak 48, you don't get up and twerk in the middle of the floor while the waiters are carrying out platters of hot food. So you're not going to do all that here. He didn't say that, but I'm just saying there's levels we'll go to when it comes to black establishments and there's levels we'll go to in other places. My recommendation is don't do it in either one of them. Be respectful, twerk in your house, go out to eat, sit down, have a good time, enjoy the fruits of your labor. Don't nobody want to see all that anyway, to be honest with you. Don't nobody want to see all that at dinner time. Damn. Um, I read this book long time ago. I cannot remember the man's name. It was called Men Don't Heal, They Ho. Men Don't Heal, They Ho. And he talked about how certain men, they don't work on their trauma. What they do is they hoe. And they hoe by way of sexual encounters. Woman after woman after woman after woman. And he, did, he starts to break it down and, and talk about the different caliber of women. And he, I only want to talk about this one real quick before I go to Karen. He talks about hoes. He said, you know why hoes take their clothes off or they don't wear clothes? Because they can't do nothing else. They can't read. They can't write. He, he don't mean literally. They can't read. They can't write. But when it comes to putting a hoe up to, we're going to say, let's say your standard model of an intellectual, I'm going to just say a uh, basic woman. Because most of y'all swear up and down. That hoes got it going on. They're more beautiful men with me. Da, da, da. Let's just say a basic model and you have a hoe. He says she can't even do half of what a basic model could do. So hoes can't cook. They can't clean. So guess what they do? They're going to take their clothes out. They're not going to wear that much because that's their bait. And that's the way they go out and get a man. I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm telling you this is what a man said in his book. Okay, too legit to quit. You read that book? Men don't heal, they hoe. He broke it down, 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 all the way to the ground. And why men pick hoes? It's easy. They ain't, it's no effort. They ain't got to do nothing. Period, point blank. All right, let's try this again, Miss Karen. Don't hit nothing now. I'm scared. You think we got it? Give me a thumbs up. You hope so? Hold on. Let me try one more time, child. Let's see. Welcome to the stage, Miss Karen. We got to uh, unmute you. Don't click out. Hold on. You got to turn your microphone on. Ah. Oh, man. Man. This really breaks my heart, Miss Karen. You going to have to get somebody to teach you how to use Y'all, I feel so bad. Miss Karen has been trying to get on all morning. I wish she had somebody that could teach her how to use it when she's not Xing herself out <laughs> of the live. Damn, Miss Karen, I wish I was there. We're going to have to go ride. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. We're going to have to go ride so I can teach you how to use that phone, Miss Karen. With that being said, let's slide over to the last super chat. And with that being said, after we're done with that. All right, Palace. The Super Chat Squad is in the building. We appreciate you, baby. The Super Chats are fire. Get in your bag. That's a lot of money.
Are you kidding me? I've been talking this time. Oh my God. I've been talking all this time with no damn sound. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is crazy. <laughs> It just goes to show, y'all. We all make mistakes. I was, baby, I was going in. Let me see if I still got these super chats up. So I read every one of them. Uh, a set with the two pieces, I did mean to say more. And what she meant was she sent the super chat earlier, but she cut off half of her message. She did mean to say more. A 10 piece from Candace, no, Constance Covington. Her attire says, save and sanctified. I know that's right, even though we know it ain't. All right. A five piece from. Timeless. Timeless says, remember black women, she does not represent the majority. These videos represent the minority of us black queens. Amen, queen. Amen. Amen. Beth Murph with the five piece says, sorry, queen, that I lost the connection on stage. Thank you for the clarity. The wilding is real with the corner. See, there y'all go with them hard ass words. I think I think a group of y'all have gotten together and say, girl, you know, when I said what I said, what we going to do is we're going to throw three hard words out of, you know, she ain't going to be able to pronounce it. So let me, let me give it a shot and jump in like a um, double Dutch. Thank you for the clarity. The wilding is real with the cornucopia of motives. I said what I said. I hope I said it right. Cookie from the shy with the five piece says, that's why I don't come up. I don't know how <laughs> you to my Miss Kieran. Look, that technology is whooping her behind, ain't it? Listen, and then Cookie from the Shot also had another one, but I accidentally exited out because I didn't know I was on mute, child. Please forgive me. Charge it to my head and not my heart. Y'all, I cannot believe I was doing all that talking. Carnucopia. Carnucopia. Okay, I said it. Now, look. Carnucopia. Carnico somebody come up here and pronounce it real quick. Carnucopia. Y'all wrong for that, throwing those hard words out. Um, didn't hear your, oh, I, I said it now. We good, Miss Beth. Listen, are y'all following that story? Thank you, Trendy. Thank you, Trendy. I knew my girl was going, hold on, Trendy. <laughs> I got to give you a round of applause because, baby, them words whooping my ass. Hold on. <laughs> Help your sister out, Trendy. Okay, now, <laughs> this one is actually kind of those, the emphasis is hard sometimes. This is how I pronounce it, cornucopia. Oh, man. Okay, cornucopia. <laughs> what did I say? You almost had, you just put an emphasis on the P. You said cornucopia. So you still were pronouncing it. You just put an emphasis on the wrong syllable. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> What's the right way to say it again? Say it one more time. Cornucopia. Cornucopia. Say I even put the it. thing, I put the phonetics in there for you in the chat. Let me put it in the private chat for you. Look, cornucopia. Right. Stay up here because yeah. I think somebody else is going to try to get cute. And say, I'm going to the chat where I can't say it. I think I think I done caught on to what's going on around here. <laughs> <laughs> somebody is after me. <laughs> no, <laughs> please. Somebody's after me. Somebody's trying to take to me down. With our five and ten dollar words, because you you come with so many, you know, the intellectual oh. side, so it's just natural. <laughs> what I say, cornucopia. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's after me, and I don't know who it is. Miss Reed, ah. welcome to the stage. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Can you hear me? All right, we can hear you. Okay, I'm uh, looking at the the photo you have up here. Of this half-naked girl, and all I can think of is that her pimp told her to get ready to go and go to work. And that is what I'm thinking about this young woman. And sometimes you just have to let them be and let a man tell them that they're uh, not what they think they are, for them to sit down and get a hold of themselves. And I said what I said. 
And she said what she said. Thank you for coming back, Reed. I noticed you was up here, but maybe you got tired of waiting on your technology. But I appreciate you coming back, Queen. And you have a beautiful Saturday. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Trending. Let me check. Let me make sure. Yeah, they got another one. Hold on. Let me see if Uh -uh. I can. Let me see. Not that one. Have a good If I don't have it, Uppity can come up next. (laughs) Okay. Let me see if they put any hard ones. Not yet, word. not yet. But stay here if you if you got time. Yeah, I'll be back here. All right, they ain't finna catch me slipping no more. <laughs> All right, Aset, what what are your thoughts? Uh, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So I, I want to go back to a couple things when you got caught up on succubus. Like a succubus is the female form of a demon sucking your energy through a sexual form. Like I'm a I'm a woman that is like going to take your energy away be sexually as a demon. That's a succubus. And an incubus is would be the male form, which would be Martel. But anyway. <clears throat> uh oh, am I coming through clear? Because I can't hear. Hello, hello, I, I can, I can hear. hear you. Okay. You're real low. I can be I can hear you, but you fade in and out. So stay close to whatever microphone you're using. Uh, my phone is literally right here, but um and then for the clone of, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, my kid is doing some other things over here. Um, I'm going to have to drop down because my kid is doing some kind of funny stuff. Okay. I'm so don't sorry. Worry, don't worry. I'm so sorry, y'all. I, I got to be a parent. Though. Okay, no problem. Thank you for coming up. <sighs> All right. Sharon, real quick, what are your thoughts? Welcome back. Hi. This I want to say this. I think too many people watch too many things on YouTube and think it's appropriate what they're wearing on the different dates, on a on the job, and everything. And I think that we need to really, um, really be a mentor to some of these women at the job force. Um, be mentor and even in college, they need to force the dress code because they haven't done it for a long time. And this is what we learned from college and in the workplace. So I think that more people watching more than on YouTube than anything in the world or online, they think they're inappropriate. And I think that we as women, uh, especially black women, and we at, it, um, we at the job force, or we at in some kind of a uh, some kind of a learning platform, we should be able to mentor the young women in the right way. And that's what I'm saying on that. Amen. Thank you, Sharon, for spending the block. And she said what she said. All right. Sharon's dropping down. And I'm going to try one more time to say it. Cornucopia. Yes! Yes! Can I tell y'all something? I used to, uh, I'm going to put this word in a, I'm going to put this word in the chat. Hold on. I, I, Hold on, let me put it in here. Y'all see it? Let me know when you see it. I'm putting it on the screen. I see it. All right. So I was at work many years ago my, at this place I used to work at. And I told this girl, oh, I'm going to give me some fox fur, uh, some fox fur, whatever. She said, fox fur? What's that? I said, fox fur. It's like this jacket with fox fur all around. Da, 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 da. Oh, she I said, understand though. Oh. I've never heard of fox fur. Can you show it to me? It's called faux. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce it? Faux fur? Yes. I was so, so embarrassed, y'all. I was so I couldn't I couldn't pronounce the word, but I called it fox. Fox. F-A-U, but it was how do you pronounce it? Faux? Yep, yep. Yeah, so I I look, I'll tear up some words now. Don't give a damn. <laughs> It was such it's, it's because of the the French origin, so that's why the X is not really pronounced. <laughs> oh, look at trending. What'd you major in in college? Um, in college it was business management, but I love languages, so I was in like the honor society for French and Spanish. Oh, now I can pronounce Spanish words because that was my minor in college. Okay, okay. But I, I, mm-hmm. I guess I can't say uh, cornucopia and all of that. Is that French origin? 
Honestly, I'd have to go back and check. Somebody already probably knows in the chat on the origin of that one. I, I don't know. I learned about it in Hunger Games. I never had to say that word before. And yes, I know that's a thing on Thanksgiving, but I never heard it said or until Hunger Games. Like, what is that? <laughs> Look, somebody tearing their mama up in the chat. Karma girl said her mama couldn't. Her mo At first, she said her mama couldn't say refrigerator, so she used to say ice ice box all the time. Then she came back and said her mama also <laughs> couldn't say aluminum, so she would say tinfoil. <laughs> uh -oh. Don't do your mama like that. Let me see if I got any more hard words. I don't want to hold trending hostage. Did you see what Uffity put in there? To my Worcestershire sauce? No, the DNA one. <laughs> I ain't worried about no damn uppity. Have you ever been swallowed? Swallowed. <laughs> I ain't worried about uppity. <laughs> you knew she was going to come and get me behind these words. The DNA? Yeah, the actual, like, when it's not abbreviated. <laughs> Which one? It's it's long. It's, um, Let me she, see. Put it, she put it in there earlier. Put it in there again, uppity. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Thank you all for gifting people uh, uh, memberships to your friends and your family. Um, that's really nice. Thank you. Thank you. I got one more super chat. Then I'm going to bring Citria. The Tritra. Citra. Okay. Y'all, you, you know what? I told you somebody's after me trending. Somebody's <laughs> after me with these hard names and these hard words. <laughs> Hold it's on. all love. It's all Citra, love. Citra, you're going to have to tell me how to say your name. I think it's Citra. C C Citra. C Citra. Okay, give me. I'm going to bring you up in a minute. Hold on. <clears throat> All right, Palace, the Super Chat Squad is in the building. We appreciate you, baby. The Super Chats are fire. Get in your bag. That's a lot of money. All right, the Candace of the Queen of Candesonians. Have a good Saturday. I said what I said. Candosonians, because I used to say, what I used to say, Canadians. Oh, <laughs> I <no>. used to say. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, shoot, with a 10 piece, I appreciate you. Okay. Welcome to the stage, Sisitra. How you say it? It is Citra. You said it right. Citra, <laughs> you said it yes. correct. Yes, it's your, and I just go by on YouTube, see Citra. But um, I just wanted to mention um, with the um, Martell interview, it really disturbed me, him talking about his children. And in my opinion, um, when I was a little girl, my grandmother would never stand for someone talking about her grandchildren. And that was my daddy's mom. She would never put up with anybody talking about her grandchildren. And for me, if it was myself in that situation, he would never get on a stage nowhere and deny my kids because we will be to the courthouse on Monday. We can take a test for all of them. Don't single out one. We're going to take a test for all of them. And you'll never open your mouth up about my kids again because I don't play about my kids. And so that's what I'm standing on today. Thank I you. I know that's right. Stand on business, Queen. And we thank you for coming up. And she said what she said. Thank you, Queen. Thank you. All right. Happy Saturday. So Uppity want to be cute. Is this Uppity? Oh, it says Cindy. Who is this Cindy's word or Uppity's word? I think it was Uppity first. And they were probably putting it back in there for you. To All see right. It. Let me see if I can say it. Okay, deoxyribonucleic acid. Did I say it right? Oh, you were so close. It's just ribo, deoxyribonucleic acid. Damn. You were so close. I was real close. Y'all heard her. She said I was close. Oh, man. All right. Well, how are y'all gifting these memberships? How does that work? Real quick. We hit the super chat symbol and we pick how many we want to gift, but YouTube chooses the people. Oh, they don't, I didn't know that. And then, okay, let me ask you, when you receive one, does YouTube tell you? Yep, you it's saying it in your chat right now, Queen Sheba. It's naming who, who, who it shows. Oh, chose. wow. YouTube is pretty uh smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they know they're going to give it. Let me tell you how the algorithm works. You know why they choose? Because they choose people who are more likely to engage based on their previous activities. Mm. 
Mm. That's why. They're not going to give it to somebody that don't really be over here. So the, the computer is smarter than us when it comes to data and uh, analytics. That makes oh, sense. Oh, wow. Wow. So your money is not being used in vain. That is so nice. Well, Trinity, they said thank you for coming up to help Queen Sheba. Oh, uh, yeah. Anytime. <laughs> See, y'all, everybody has a blind spot. Everybody has an area of opportunity. And I was going to tell you, Queen, I, I have to practice the Latin words. If I catch them in time that come up on those legal documents, I'll go Google it, read it, have have Google pronounce it. And I try to practice it if I see it in time. I'm like, I don't know. I don't say these words. <laughs> I can do the Latin ones because my husband's Latin. Oh, and so not cool. only that, my grandpa was Honduran. So my mom's dad. So I know how to do the Latin words, but y'all be whooping me up with all these. I don't know where <laughs> these coming from. Latin or Spanish or both? Do you like, you do Latin and Spanish? Okay. Maybe Spanish shit. <laughs> Cause you, when you say Honduran, I'm oh, like, oh. <laughs> wait a minute. See? Trinity. <laughs> That's a Scorpio and Leo having a good time on this platform right now. <laughs> But I said, hold on, wait, hold on now. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Listen, what are your plans today? Mine, we, um, if you don't mind me saying, I'm actually sketching live today. It's between Valentine's Day theme or go ahead and do my Black History Month theme. Um, so yeah, you that's what I'm doing link today. That you can share? That somebody can put in the chat? Have you already put out your link? I do have, have my link, yes. I can. Go I ahead, can drop it. Oh, thank you. Okay, let me get it real fast. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I'm going to try to practice this word that uh, Uppity didn't put in there. Hold on. Oh, my God. Uppity. <laughs> I know the last part is phobia. Mm hmm Agoraphobia. Agoraphobia. You know what, Uppity? <laughs> He's gonna get you up. He's gonna get you. I know how to look. <laughs> now y'all know shit. That's I know how to spell, but I listen. They said they getting me back for that spelling bee. Uh oh, you cut yeah, out. So y'all make sure okay. if y'all look. If it's cold and rainy where you are, that you don't really have too much planning. You just want to make it a nice, relaxing day. Uppity is doing some live sketching today on YouTube. You see all the beautiful trendy. <laughs> she said uppity. <laughs> Yeah, you see my brain. I'm telling y'all. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, I put it. I put it in your private chat, Queen, because I don't know if it'll let me type links in your chat because I'm okay, not, you know. It. What I see, I'll be all over the place sometimes. <laughs> let me do it. Hold on. Give me one second. What I say, Uppity's doing live sketching today. She might be over there though, so you'll still see Uppity. <laughs> there we go, y'all. Make sure charcuterie. I know that because I like a meat and cheese. All right, so here's <laughs> Trending's link. What time does the show start? Six, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Which is 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, right. so if you Central Standard Time is 4 p.m. If you're on the East Coast, she's going to start at 5 p.m. Do they need to bring anything? Just their beautiful selves. And they can, And I, this is when I have panels. I don't do panels often. So this is when we can come up and talk about trending topics and stuff. So... All right. All right. This is going to be nice. Always be cute. Say, man, she says, I'm at work. I wish I could be home relaxing. <laughs> it's raining in Georgia. Well, we at home. We at home. Always be cute. How you have to work on a Saturday? Um, charcuterie. Yes. All right. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. I don't want to hold you hostage any longer. Um, I'm over here calling uppity trending and trending uppity. So that's when I know it's time to go. God bless you all. It was a hell of a show. Hold on. One more. Anthro Anthropomorphic qualities. Ha! Did I get it right? Now that one I would have looked up, but I feel like I would have also said anthropomorphic qualities. So we'll see. <laughs> anthropomorphic, yes. Oh, okay. I'm a sub trending soon. Okay. Okay. All right. Jordan is coming over. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> Yes, Jordan actually found me in a manosphere, y'all. I was whooping ass over there about a year ago, but I'm I'm over here with y'all now, playing with y'all. But all right, God bless you all. Make sure you check out training today at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
4 p.m. Central Standard Time, pull up. She's going to be sketching. They're going to be talking all things hot topics, and she is black and white. She gets straight to the facts, baby, and she eliminates the BS. Great, great platform. So with all that being said, you all have a wonderful day. Don't push yourselves too much. If you want to stay in and just enjoy yourselves, it's okay to do that. Enjoy your house, the fruits of your labor. Anything you want to say, Trendy, before we leave? Thank you so much. And don't forget, don't make excuses or disclaimers when someone compliments you. And that's all I got. <laughs> Just say thank you. Just say thank time. you. That's right. Bye. That's right. All right, y'all. Bye. Have a good day.